feel like you're mocking me. No, we're not mocking you. We are only being your friends. Lee, <laughs> this is an intervention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you, you mean you don't like my dad jokes? <laughs> no, we love them. We love them, Lee. <laughs> Metcalf. Nice. <laughs> I mean, it is Christmas. It's the time for goodwill. I don't think I should be learning this kind of insincerity <laughs> now. Jokes. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, appropriate. It's cracker season, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, okay. Let's move on. With Although the... cracker did die earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. He's cream crackered. Anyway. Right, okay then. Uh, let's 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 roll the jingle. Let's roll the jingle. So, do you know that Santa Claus never has to pay for parking because it's always on the house? Oh. Oh. God. <laughs> See? Fire. <laughs> what? That's not the worst one I've heard. Okay. Uh, well, Doesn't I... mean you have to go again, but it's yeah. not the worst one. I was going to say, how do you determine the gender of an ant? You put them in water. If it sinks to the bottom, it's a girl ant. If it floats, it's a boy ant. <laughs> oh, God. Fucking oh, hell. What? There you go. Hmm. And and just to keep the Christmas theme, yeah. which reindeer is a dinosaur's least favourite? I don't know. Comet. <laughs> oh. Anyway... Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Black Dog 114. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. And I'm Elton. And we are not joined by Jim for uh, reasons which have been explained over the last couple of weeks, and uh, we wish him well. He's going Indeed. He's going in for a little op, op to Electric Boogaloo um, th- tomorrow, as we record. So, um, yes, we'll, we'll ho- wish him well, and hopefully he'll be back on uh, the cast next week. Um, but, you know these things they are random and so we'll just find out how it goes at the time but you know fingers crossed send him good wishes and all that sort of stuff on all mm-hmm. the medias go on because he's because he's bound to be sitting in in the hospital listening to this cast obviously obviously oh, oh, yeah isn't he yeah. jim jim you're listening to us aren't you jim good luck jim <laughs> good luck jim um so yes so he's not joining us this week um, but we are going to have all the usual stuff, which is like see how everyone's week's been, um, a little bit of chat, and then we'll move on to this week's unconventional movie, uh, Christmas movie, which is my choice, which was Brazil, because it's set at Christmas. So, of course, it's a Christmas movie. See? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So that's how it works, isn't it? That's how it works. If it's set at Christmas, and if it's not set at Christmas, if it just has a tree in it, <laughs> if it's got snow... If it's got anything, even if there's even so much as a jingle of a bell on the soundtrack, it gets in. Because you know what, I'm sick to death of looking for normal Christmas movies this season. <laughs> but anyway, so let's find out how everyone's week's been, and we'll start with you, Elton. How's it been, sir? Uh, well, today you find me riding the fader because. <laughs> I is well poorly and stuff. <laughs> You're riding the fader. Yes, riding the fader. The, the cough button. Oh, is right. It, oh, all right. It's not like <laughs> twisting your melon. Uh, <laughs> anything like that. Oh, twisting your mellow. That's it. Sorry. Twisting your melon. <laughs> I don't know. Happy Mondays. Yeah. Hey, it was twisting your melon. Yeah, it was twisting your melon. Are you sure about... it was all oh, twisting my mellow? No, it was talking I'm about looking melon. At, I'm, looking at, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> there we twist, go. Twist your head. Twisting, yeah, twisting your noodle, twisting your brain, warping your mind, drugs. Happy Are we Mondays. actually looking up? I'm, I'm looking up the now. bloody lyric. Yeah, Happy Mondays. Step Happy on. Mondays. Oh. Sean Ryder. Lyric. That yeah. that poet laureate. That yeah, he is. and that fantastic disco dancer, Bez. 
Uh, you're twisting my... It is Melon. I thought... I didn't think I'd misheard it. No, it is Melon. It is Melon. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we have that sorted now. You're <laughs> twisting my Melon Man. You know, you talk so hip, man. You're twisting my Melon Man. Call the cops. Cops. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of that song, I can't. I couldn't even tell you what the lyrics were because well, none these of are it. lyrics. Well, I'm looking at the lyrics now. There's, there's stuff in there I, I, I obviously didn't understand what he was singing. I thought there were some other words, but it's gonna stamp out your fire. He can change your desire. Don't you know he can make you forget your amount? Well, I know that bit, but that's that gonna stamp on your oh, stamp out your fire. I don't remember that. I've not a clue. No, nope. no, nope. it's like uh, songs by Dexy's Midnight Runners as well. <laughs> Johnny Ray, <laughs> that's it. That's jeez. Ray, set the radio to the burning Oh, never. <laughs> Yes, anyway, yes. <laughs> anyway, how's your week been, <laughs> Elton? Oh, I, I, I don't even know how we got there. Honestly, <laughs> that's a beauty, mate. You, you never do. It just this is it's just like it's a journey, it's a life journey. It's yeah, just, just wherever it takes you. Just, it just, is. just ride the wave. Yeah, all the way in. Be like the Little Tobo and just you know see where it ends. Keep on up. down that road. Yep. Anyway. Um, <laughs> It's the only way out of it, Elton. Just ignore it and move on. It's the only yeah. way out. Pull out the pull out the dive. Don't look into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Never look into their eyes. Just drag them across to the end of the road. <laughs> it's vision based on movement. <laughs> Carry on driving. Um. Yeah. So I've I've been quite poorly this week, mm-hmm. and that all started, I think, Wednesday evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, last Wednesday evening, and it progressively see, I can't even talk it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse over the weekend mm. uh, weirdly enough I'd booked off the week from Wednesday until Monday because we had family over this uh, mm. this weekend mm. and why wouldn't I get sick of course I would mm. yeah why, I, it was to be expected I think yeah well that's that's the old um that's the old holiday thing isn't it the instant you actually take some time off for yourself is the moment your body finally goes, oh, thank fuck, and collapses <laughs> yeah. and just lets everything in. It's like, you know what? I'm fed up fighting all this shit. Go on, just have at it. <laughs> yeah, just start shutting down organs randomly, doesn't it? It's like, no, <laughs> don't need livers or yeah. pancreas or anything like that today. Exactly. It's like it's like your spaceship finally breaks down to the point where all you've got is oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> and the ship just drifts. T- turn the ignition keys on and all the lights go bing. <laughs> That's it. Yep, everything goes off. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think my body went through that a little bit, and uh, to the point where I was, uh, I've been watching the football as I do, and I couldn't even watch anything on Wednesday. I was just laying in bed in my full cobber. I, I was in like me, me big cozy jumper in the duvet, trying to get to sleep. That's and the I, best, though, isn't it? Uh, well, sometimes it is, but when you're shivering and shaking and you've got about a million mm. layers on, yeah. it feels weird because mm. you're sweating because mm. you're hot, but you feel inside cold. Mm. And that's not good. Mm. That's a weird feeling. And so I spent the best part of that night thinking I was asleep, but didn't think I was asleep. It, it was mm. a weird. I had some weird trippy dreams that night as well oh, right. um, and i uh, you probably hear in my voice now i'm still going through it i've had tests i'm not on the covid scale yet it's all good i had some tests on wednesday and thursday nothing and then i had one just now and still nothing so we're all good okay but i i am riding that fader because i if if i start laughing then i will start coughing I can feel one coming now. <laughs> so hang on. So hang on. What you're actually yeah. saying is the reason you're not laughing at my jokes is because you just don't want to start coughing. 
That's right, yes. Yes. Oh, thank God. I thought I'd just been doing shit jokes. I, I've had that for the last 10 years, Darren, with you as well. Have you? <laughs> yes. I, I've had a cough just brewing up, but whenever you say something, I try to hold it back so I don't start coughing. You know what? I really am going to have to invite you out to the uh, lighthouse I own, Elton, because uh, I've got this really what, the wanking big... shed? What? <laughs> yeah, no, the no, wanking no. shed? No, what? It's got... <laughs> It's uh, it's got a particularly good metal staircase. I really must, uh, <laughs> you know. It's, I'll tell you what. It's really interesting if you're at the top of the stairs and you're tied to a a, a chair a as chair. well. Dick yeah, chair. a deck chair. You know, at the top of the stairs, you get the most out of it. I feel <laughs> um, like that. You know, at the top of the spiral metal, very hard, lumpy uh, staircase. That's turn all you, I'm saying. I think he's going to turn you into human slinky. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Nice. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. It, I'm glad it's the season of goodwill and, <laughs> and good thoughts for all. Poor old Jimmy's going to come back going, guys. What have you done? It's What's gonna going be, on? I was going to say it's going to be like that that meme gif from um, from Community where sort of. <laughs> <laughs> where Troy comes in and the house is on fire <laughs> and, and someone's been shot lying on the floor and the whole place is burning down. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. So um so yeah, so you've been ill as fuck is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. So uh yeah. Oh. My week has involved family coming up, which no one else knows about, so that's fine. And being ill. So right. that is it, I'm afraid. And and football, presumably. Yeah. yeah. Which oh. which is so far out the realm of my experiences. <laughs> I, I barely know if, if they have grass or a court. It is not for this uh, show. No, no, no. Out, out of our remit. Yeah. Hosts getting ill and getting dragged off to hospital in various places. Yeah, that's in our remit. Yeah. <laughs> getting old in real time over the last 13 years. That's in our remit. Exactly. <laughs> it's like Judge Dredd in real time, isn't it? It is. It is. It's just going to come back. We all down. have our scarves. Yeah. Scarves? It, scars. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. I, I was, I was going to say, at some point, it's just going to be me just sitting here talking to myself and you guys are all passed on. We're all in jars. Sp- speaking speaking to you via, via Ouija board. <laughs> Well, there you uh, go. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be by Derek Cora, would it? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, uh, no, no. Well, he's got to come back to go out again, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Get the word. Get the word. Get the word, nonce. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the word. Now, Sam, Sam's coming back to me. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Okay. Uh, do you know someone with eyes? <laughs> do you know someone who was once living... Around the same time you were. <laughs> Did they uh, like food? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here know someone who likes food? Anybody? <laughs> anybody? Exactly. <laughs> Did, Did they have a head? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Spirits anybody can't know lie. any humans? <laughs> anybody know any humans? <laughs> any humans? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> I'm getting a vision of someone. <laughs> you know someone? Amazing. <laughs> Come closer. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, well, um, yeah, so you, you've been ill. Yep. Great. Yep, that's uh, it, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Okay, then, um, Jim, how's your week been? Right. Darren, <laughs> how's your week been? <laughs> Well, uh, pretty much like Elton to begin with. Oh my I, God. I, I, I did done was ill uh, for most of the week. Oh, I uh, knew you tried to one up me. I knew it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, people know I was off the day before, well, you know, when the podcast was on <laughs> and I wasn't on there. And it, I really was just not with it at all. Actually, actually, people barely noticed. Oh, thanks, mate. According Cheers. to the according to the feedback, it was our most yeah. popular but, episode. In fact, we got more listeners when you were yeah. there, Darren. Fact, it, I'm looking at the patterns. I can see there is a there is a pattern forming. Yeah. I was going to say, allow me allow me to look at the stats when you go off go off on holiday. Yeah, <laughs> it, uh, can you be ill more often? Uh, it's, it, it, it seems as though seeing each other puts a strain on the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. Cheers. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. All the best. All, All the best. best. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. So um, lots of very kind of concerning uh, stomach things going on. Mm. Um, still not quite got to the bottom of it yet, but um, hopefully we will. I've started feeling hungry again now, so uh, you know I'm kind of a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm, a le- I'm less worried now. Yeah. I'm less yeah. worried. We're not so, into radioactive arse eggs. Not the not for the minute, but uh, you know, tests I've had tests done and everything's come back um, clean so far. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't oh. be clean when they use those things. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, well, yeah, you're, you're doing it wrong, Darren. You're doing, <laughs> you're it, doing wrong. it wrong. Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah, no wonder, no problem. So um, yes, when I I did done recover enough. Um, mm. I, uh, me, and, me and Ree went to the cinema mm-hmm. this week and we we thought we'd go for a, a traditional uh, festive movie. So we went to watch Violent Night. Oh, come on. <coughs> How yes. is that? Is it any good? Uh, I, I loved it. Uh, we sat there and we thoroughly enjoyed it. I know uh, I've, I've seen one or two people reviewing it, but um, uh, I, I've got to say, I think they're reviewing it too seriously. This is not a movie to take seriously at all. This is just one of those, you know, this is going to be fun. It's got all the hallmark sort of moments in it. You know, it's Mm. got the schmaltzy stuff, but it is, it's offset by incredibly painful violence. (laughs) Really? I mean, I'm so, I'm surprised they got away with a 15. Right. On this film. Uh, Mm. For anybody who doesn't know what Silent or Violent Night is about, um, it's all to do with a very cynical Santa who decides that this year is his last year and that's it. I am done because kids are selfish. They, they, they're sort of like, all they want is more. They're all greedy, blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm. It's like, nobody's got, you know, nobody's got the real spirit of Christmas. So I cannot be bothered with this anymore. Mm. Right. Um, and it's, it, it kind of leads him to this this young girl who still believes in Christmas, right? Mm. Really kind of believes in Santa Claus. Um, who happens to be uh whose whose dad happens to be the son of an extremely wealthy woman who runs like big companies mm. and stuff like this. Yeah. And they go to visit her one Christmas and their place is raided by terrorists. Mm. And so to cut a long story short, the little girl pleads to Santa to help out. And boy, does Santa help out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say too much because I do believe discovering some of the stuff, especially Santa's backstory. Right. As to how, like, what he was before he became Santa. Mm. I'm, I'm going to leave that to people to watch. Okay. Because it is relevant to the situation that they're in. So, um, can I ask just one question? Yeah, because I I figured it was a joke that was almost almost guaranteed. Do, is there at any point where he suddenly goes, "I have a machine gun, ho ho ho"? No, 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 oh. no, because he doesn't know how to use machine guns. He's like, "Does anybody?" There's one line he says to someone, "Does anybody know how to use these gimmicks or these gizmos?" <laughs> no, no, Santa's got other ways of dealing with people. Oh, um, he's got one very specific way, actually, but I'm not going to say what it is. Suffice to say, I thought there was some clever stuff in the film, mm. right? Um, <laughs> uh, especially sort of like the use of Santa's sack and stuff like that and mm. other powers that mm. um, Santa has supposedly got that even he doesn't understand. So right. um, David Harbour is absolutely brilliant in the role of Santa Claus. I, I love David Harbour and it's like he plays it as only David Harbour can, I think. Right. So, um, yeah, very disgruntled, uh, very cynical. But, uh, mm. yeah, it, it is amazing how it does actually push across the message of Christmas while still having the place fucking littered with bodies <laughs> and what have you and broken limbs and shit like that, right? You right. were, I said, we sat there through most of this through going, oh, ah, oh, yeah, like that. 
E. So, right. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Like I say, there is <laughs> there's schmaltz in it. Um, it's mm. like it's offset by ultra violence. Mm. By some of the stuff that actually happens in it, but um, you, it is a very satisfying movie to watch. Right, it, every every hit is a very satisfying hit. Ah, nice. because these people are just fucking shitheads, and that's it. It's just you just go in, don't expect anything serious because it's not. It's done for laughs. Mm. Um, uh, you know, just go in and enjoy. Just, just yeah, switch off, go. Okay, switch off and go. Switch right. off, switch off, and just go in. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, you you will get your fair share nice. of ever. I can see if someone might think it's maybe um, a barn or too long, right? I can oh, right. See that. I enjoyed it though. I didn't mm-hmm. think it was too long, but I can see some people might, mm. you know, right? Might not be uh, too au fait with the length of it. But uh, yeah, I I do recommend it. So mm. um, I think I'm going to be putting that across as next year's um, Christmas movie for me because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will hit streaming, so we can use that. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's that's mine already. That's in the bank. You 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 bagged that already, have you? I've bagged that already. Okay, yes. so okay. that's over there. <laughs> so uh, now we mm. come to the other movie that I watched this week. That, yep. Um, Late to the party, again. I've never heard of that. No, no. Late to the party, as in this oh. is, you know, <laughs> I should have seen this. Right? Go on in. I'm a child of the 80s, so I should have seen this. Oh, God, but, okay. But like Legend, yeah. okay, with Tom Cruise in it, I've never seen that either, right? I've right. never watched that film, and I should do, because it's got an excellent turn by Tim Curry in it, and fantastic makeup he's mm-hmm. wearing in that as well. Um, so this week... Because I wanted to watch the TV series, mm. I watched Willow. Oh, never mind. Yeah. No, I thought it was okay, right? Mm. It's a pretty standard 80s fantasy movie, right? Mm. So, uh, of, of of sort of like, of its time, you know? Mm. Pretty much like things like Hawk the Slayer and shit like that, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's 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 that on that sort of level. Hulk the Slayer is a big pile of shit. Good out. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, but what I couldn't get over mm. is some of the special effects in it, right? Because mm. there's oh, how can I? There's this one bit where Willow himself, who is played by Warwick Davis, mm. um, is on a sled. Right, he's on a shield going down a mountain. Right. right? And um, they've done lots of close-up shots, so it looks like he's sat on the shield. But then mm-hmm. they do this bit where he has to go, they actually have to do a long shot yeah. going down this hill, right? Yeah. Now, the camera is about, I would say, 40 to 50 foot away from the actual shield going right. down the hill. Right. You can actually see it's a dummy on there, right? But that's not the comical part. Right, because even though it is so far away, you can still see the glue line where they've put a wig on it. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you fucking not. Right, right. It just, mm. it's really, really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, really, really bad. God. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like I say, pretty standard fare. You know, never ending story. This, that mm. kind of thing for the eighties. It's like, oh, fine. You know. Yeah. That was, that was a bit of a giggle. Um, but yeah, man, the special effects have not have not aged well at all. And yeah. this is this is an industrial light and magic film. This is a film written by George Lucas, right? Okay. So this should have like and Star direct, Wars directed level. by Ron Howard as well. Yeah, exactly. Right? So there shouldn't really be any shonky special effects in it. There should be okay special effects, but not this. This is like we've spent, <laughs> we've spent uh, four and a half yeah, p in a button. <laughs> we, yeah, we spent like all this, all our money on making this film over here, and the two pound fifty we had left <laughs> and, the, and, and luncheon vouchers, we've made Willow. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I've only seen Willow once. You've only seen Willow once. Yeah, and. Right. And the one thing I came away from it was that yeah. George basically found the find and replace function in Word. And oh, where yeah. where he's got Darth Vader, he's got P 
Pat, what's his name's oh, character. Oh, hold on, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's even, do you know what? There's there was a Death at one Star. Point. There's two two droney characters who were like little little sub sublings who exactly. go off. You're R two D two and C three PO there. Yep, that's, that's in there. But no, this is the thing. You would think that Pat Roach is the Darth Vader character. Right? Yeah, but there's a there's there are soldiers that look a lot more like Darth Vader. I actually had to stop it, mm. rewind it, and pause it to because I thought. Have they put a Darth Vader mask on someone? Yeah. And it, it wasn't. It was the way this mask was designed. But fucking hell, it's like that, you know, with mm. the blinking, you would think that that is Vader. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. they've stuck a little Easter egg in there. Oh, God, you know? yeah. Well, look, every, it, it everything wasn't. in it, everything in it is just basically, we took Star Wars and then what yeah. we did was we took anything that looked remotely science fiction and we removed it. Hell, even, you know what, even the creature... You know the creature that's in the the the, um, the moat, yes, that's guarding the castle. Oh, even that looks like one of the chess pieces from the well, fucking Star Wars. Chess not only board. that, it's it's got it's got two heads, but both heads are Rancor heads. Oh fucking hell, yes they are. I <laughs> thought I recognised it. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, you literally cobbled this film together out of pieces you had left in a drawer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Mm. Oh, and you know, like there's those there's those moments when something is apparently like is mm. obvious and it's been mm. obvious for like many thousands of years, but mm. you finally only twig today. Yeah. Like, you know, you go, Oh, like a lyric to a song or yep. something. You think it's called one thing and you your brain suddenly goes, Oh, wait a minute, this is the latest update, this is what mm. it actually means. It's yeah. like, you know, you sexy thing by hot chocolate. It's not, I believe in milk holes. It's, I believe in miracles, Darren. <laughs> milk holes. Okay, milk holes, right? Now, <laughs> I, I I had no trouble with that lyric all these years, right? Because where I used to live, back at Oldfield Grove in South London, right. we used to have a hole. Milk holes. Cut, yeah, we used to have a milk hole, right? What? We used to have a milk hole cut into the sides of the actual wall I, I, just before we got onto the door. It was a, it's so the milkman could put the milk bottles in. I'm terrified. I was going to say, I was terrified to ask what a milk hole is. Elton, I have believe you, in milk holes. Elton, have you ever had a milk hole? I've never heard of a milk hole. Yeah, a milk hole. So there we go. I, I mean... Just I'm, because you say it again, Darren, doesn't mean it's actually a thing. No, it, no, it is if you say it enough. And if you say it loud <laughs> enough as well, if you shout it at people... <laughs> it becomes it becomes a thing. If you use a word more than three times, if you say like milk hole, right? If I'm saying milk hole more than three times, like that word, you know, milk hole, then it's a it's a word. Yeah, you know, think it, it's going it, to get put into the dictionary next I, year? Yeah. I would not be fucking surprised. What I want to know is what what and uh, what the um, Martin Thompson is going to put in, put in for the uh, for the podcast yep. without context. Have it, Martin. <laughs> Top milk holes. There you go. <laughs> What's a milk hole in your in your in your image search? Indeed, Paul, indeed. Paul Sod's image search is absolutely fucking ruined. I guess. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Mm. Uh, you know, don't go. Uh, if anybody scans his machine, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's oh, our fault. Yeah, <laughs> this man seems to be a bit of a wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he googling milk holes and, and the nuclear anal <laughs> anal eggs, <laughs> radioactive <laughs> anal eggs? What was he? To stick in your milk hole. But there you are. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Stop. Ah, blimey. But yeah, I'm sitting there watching the film and then suddenly, it, and, and, you, and this is this is a Darren Level event, right? Okay. Um, it's like Joanne Wally Kilmer and Val Kilmer. And I'm suddenly like, oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> seriously? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Seriously, wow, 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 well, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, suddenly discovering to the party is tight. <laughs> suddenly discovering two people are married to each other by the same surname is tight. Yeah, indeed, mm. indeed. It took me all that time to just like, oh, and it's only it's only taken you thirty fucking years. I think they are forty years. I mean, they've, they've, they've been broken divorced. Up. For, exactly, they, they got divorced like many, many thousands of years ago. <laughs> so uh, ah, fuck it, whatever. Oh, you numpty, indeed. indeed. Right. So, um, did well, you actually I, like the film? What Willow? Mm. 
yeah, I, well, it was all right. You know, I thought it was okay. I thought it was, you know, it was like, well, I didn't mind watching that. I can see where they kind of ran out of ideas by the end of it and used magic right. hocus pocus to kind of run out of cash. Oh, we need to finish this film. What are we going to do? <laughs> um, use magic and shit. <laughs> Wave just, your hands and have exactly. it all disappear. <laughs> yes. Oh, have have like you know, <laughs> let's just blow up G Marsh. There we go. <laughs> Blow her up. G Marsh is like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, what? Uh, I beg your pardon? And suddenly Gene was gone. And that's it. The movie's ended. Goodbye. Get out. (laughs) Indeed. Mm. Last seen travelling through Dartford airspace. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, (sighs) bro. Right. And, ah, so there we go. That's um, really. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Okay, that was it. Was it? Uh, we we ended with Gene Marsh being blasted through Dartford airspace. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> sort that one out, Thompson. There we go. Yeah. Oh well. There I'm you go. looking forward to this week's uh, pictures <laughs> without, without context. context. Yep. Nice. Oh well. <laughs> well, we'll see, won't we? I don't know. I don't know. We don't. We don't, we never quite get what we're expecting. I think out of that. And if nobody knows what we're talking about, go on the Facebook group, facebook dot com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast, because you know regular Black Dogger listener, Mister Martin Thompson, does yeah. four pictures of the podcast last week in con- without context. So yeah. make of it what you will. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> It's um, it's an interesting challenge for a for usually for a th- sort of Thursday or Friday afternoon. It's, it's just like I'm laughing at it and I'm thinking, why? How did that? How does that relate to what we said? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's a Barnard level event. Oh, oh. <laughs> get it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, Joe and Wally Kilmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Uh, was it the Double Take Brothers? <laughs> It'd be funny if they were married. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I'll do my week then. <laughs> um, not an awful lot to um to do uh, this week. I went down to see uh, Katie down in college. Um, she, we she's she's just down there, and we went down to Canterbury to sort of see her. And you know, you know how you know how kids, you know, they miss their parents. You know, they, they this is their first long time away, and you know yeah. they'll be exciting to they'll be excited to see you as you come back you know you drive you drive up to the university and you think they'll be waiting for you with open arms and it'll all be fantastic you know can't wait to go out to the shops and go go to a restaurant have a week catch up it could be great we pulled up um and then sat in the car park for 35 minutes because she had overslept and her phone had Basically, <laughs> run out of charge. I thought you were going to say she. Uh, we got there and she was out. <laughs> she was out. Yeah. Well, I mean, metaphorically speaking, she was. I mean, she was out to lunch. So, so yeah, we're yeah. all sort of walking around the uh, campus grounds, going, which, where, which one of these rooms is hers again? So we can yeah. throw mud at the window. And it's like, oh, which one? Which one? And uh, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm sure she isn't listening, but you know if. If you are, Katie, wake up. <laughs> yeah. 30 Fancy. fucking minutes in the car park. <laughs> that was. That was not fun. It was not a fun It was. Minutes. It was freezing cold. Absolutely well, freezing. Um, other than that, um, I finished watching The Peripheral on um, Netflix. No, not Netflix, okay. on Amazon. And all I can say is the last three episodes undid any goodwill I had of it for the oh. previous seven. So they can, so oh. yeah, peripheral can go r- take a piss up a rope. Um, the 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 you, you know when things have kind of gone a bit awry with the writing when mm. they do a whole episode which is a flashback which explains stuff which they've already told you about. Right. And so you're kind of like, yeah, I don't really care. You're just wasting time, aren't you? And then they they kind of 
start f- having all the characters speak like they're in some kind of like amateur dramatic recreation of Shakespeare. Nobody, nobody can say just yes or no or or um, I think this person might be in trouble or I think this person might be a pain in the arse. What they have to say is something along the lines of. It occurs to me that the little bud is uh, starting to bloom in a way that we would not prefer it to be in the garden. It's just like, oh, for the love of fucking Pete, just just draw a line under it, write that sentence again, except use words <laughs> which are which are concurrent and make sense and don't need me to sit there working out a thesaurus of phrases and similes and utterly convoluted speech. By the end of it, it was... I mean, they all but went, um, hitherto, here thou shalt not, thou die there, there and everything, with every single, single fucking phrase. And I just... And the the finale resulted in the most stupid attempt at trying to um, hide in time travel that I've... I've I think I've come up I've I've come across in quite some time. Oh dear. Oh. Um, not that it doesn't work within the logic of the story, but you just kind of go, oh, for goodness sake. Yes, I've seen this somewhere else before, but I can't say it because otherwise it would be a spoiler. But it just by the end of it, I was just like, I'll oh, get bent, and then it sort of goes, <laughs> oh, and here we go. We've got a we got a we got a cliffhanger, and you're like. Yeah, I don't care. And then it's like, oh, and then we've got a little after after um, credit sequence. You go, yeah, I really don't care. Still but you watch you watch it, you watch it nonetheless. And it kind of, again, it's like four old blokes sitting around the table, and they're kind of going, they're going. It has come to the conclusion that the orchard is somewhat par- is somewhat parched, and some uh, the only way to save the tree is to cut the branch. And we must, and we are very good at cutting the branch all the way down to the stump. And it's just like, what on earth are you talking about? I'm pretty sure Mitchell and Webb did a whole sketch about that kind of things. What? What do you mean? I mean, we must show him out. What, yes. What do you mean, show him out? Exactly. I mean, you know, take him for a ride. Yes. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Kill him. Just yeah. kill him. Yeah. It occurs to me that the thorn in our side could be well dealt with with an, a, a, a laser plastered um, band aid. What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, it just. Yeah. The, the Uncle Ben's rice is rising south in the winter, but only when the buffaloes are looking south. It's just like that kind of shit. And you're just like, I yeah. don't care. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't. <coughs> so um yeah so um the peripheral went from vaguely okay to just totally tedious um right, i'm gonna stay clear of that then yeah i mean it's got it's got some time travelly stuff in it but yeah it's kind of like they Doesn't ran out it's gonna be good though does it no no it's got it, it's got that it's got that netflix bloat thing of kind of like three episodes doing nothing and then all of a sudden they rush to the end when they realise they've only got three episodes left, and they just and it's just like oh god sakes, um and it but the but on the complete end other end of the spectrum, not necessarily good but just at the other end of the spectrum for being quite plain about what's going on was the Grey Man on Netflix. Have has anyone seen this? The Grey Man. Yeah. Um, is that the one with? Um, Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. Yes, yes. I yes. mean, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's 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 just it's just action spy thriller pap that yes. just rattles along at a speed that just makes you go. I I I'm sure that the plot makes no sense whatsoever, but there's still lots of explosions and action and quips and running about and um, yeah, all right, yep. fine. I'll go with that for I'll go with that for two hours. <laughs> that that'll Indeed. do. The only thing that I found, though, mm-hmm. was that there's a big action set piece set in Prague. Yes. And without getting to, oh, look, I've been to Prague, the places they go for this action set piece are quite distinctive if you've ever been there. Mm-hmm. And as as you always find, is like if you've been to a place and then you see it on the telly, you go, oh, I've been there. Oh, mm-hmm. that's cool. 
and what it actually worked out was we worked out me and Lisa watching it. We worked out, I think we worked out that the entire high speed chase all over the town basically went in a two hundred yard block oh, in right. a little square. It literally went round a square, and they just filmed it from different angles. And it was just like, oh, that kind of ruins the immersion a little bit. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, they're crossing a bridge. Yeah, there's only about seven or eight of them in Prague. Oh, but they're crossing a bridge next to the Charles Bridge. Okay. Oh, they're crossing another bridge. It's next to the Charles Bridge. Oh, so they've gone the same bridge the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> they just filmed it from a different angle. And there was lots of that sort of thing. Which was, you know, it's only a silly nitpick, but it was it was funny. It made me laugh anyway. So there you go. But um, other than that, not a lot has been going on in my week. Except, except, and this I'm going to spring on you guys. Except the trailer for the new Indiana Jones movie dropped. Have we seen this? Yes. You've seen it? Elton, have you seen it? I have seen it. I don't really remember it, though. Hmm. Okay. I was just wondering before we moved on to the (laughs) film, moved on to this week's film, I was just wondering if anyone had any thoughts on the trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got thoughts. Thoughts that were generated about 30 <laughs> seconds into it. Right? Yeah. Okay, I, I bit... will re-watch it while you speak. Yes. Do you want, should, we, should we wait until you've watched it? Yeah, or... okay, yeah. Let's, 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 let's call up the mighty Albatross and we'll yeah. wait. I'm going okay. to re-watch it again, but I, I've got a specific thought. So. Okay, we'll 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 run, we'll run the trailer then. Yes, in which let, case, we'll run the it. trailer and then we'll be right back. I miss the desert. I miss the sea. And I miss waking up every morning. Wondering what wonderful adventure the new day will bring to us. Those days have come and gone. Perhaps. Perhaps not. I don't believe in magic. But a few times in my life, I've seen things. Things I can't explain. I've come to believe it's not so much what you believe. It's how hard you believe I'm her godfather. Get back. So we're back. We've just watched the trailer again. Again. (laughs) Again, again. <laughs> so, so very quickly, just briefly, let's let's just go around the table and and, and see what everyone thought. Um, Elton, mm-hmm. what did, what was your immediate reaction to watching this this trailer? Um, I'm intrigued by mm. it. Mm. I would like to see it, mm. but it has that feeling mm. of kind of doesn't belong <laughs> yeah now i i had this with the other one as well uh, and which other one uh, uh last crusade <laughs> yes yes let's yes that's the one yes really mm-hmm. oh, that's a shame last crusade <laughs> was very good yeah, no I ticket last crusade yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> In the respect of, in the first three, there was a lot of practical stuff. Mm. A lot. Yeah. It. And that was part of the feeling of it. That was part of the joy and the fun of it. It had a mm. a visceral feeling of, 
mm. action and adventure, which was right there on the screen. It was actually being done, and there were mm. stunt people. Mm. Whereas I watched this trailer, I, uh, there's a lot of CGI going on here, mm. just for CGI's sake. Every single bit of fucking confetti in that street scene mm. is going to be CG'd. Mm. Well, even Indy at one point in that trailer is CG twice, as well. Twice. Yeah. Twice? Twice. Yeah. There we go. The w- once on the horse with the most stuck on head I've ever seen in yes. my life. Oh, God, yes. yes. <laughs> and then obviously the digital one with him being unveiled with the mask being taken off him when he's in the Nazi costume. Oh, they de-aged him, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, rather, they de-aged, they de-aged the, or they took a, a stunt man put an, an indie mask, uh, sorry, Harrison Ford mask on him and then put digital elements on the mask. Right. So the mask was in the right place with the right shaped face, but then the eyes and the mouth and the and the sort of like the extra elements were sort of digitally attached to it. I don't right. think they de-aged him. I think they actually just took an actual 3D head. Right. But mm. with all that being said, mm. I will still go see it. I don't yeah. know if I go to the cinema to see it, mm. but I I want to see it definitely. Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. Uh, what about you, Dal? <sighs> well, let's see now, shall we? Okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, uh, nine seconds in, and it lost me. Yeah, why right? is that? We've got Indiana Jones jumping between tuk tuks. Right? Okay. <laughs> That's it. This is a man, okay, Harrison Ford is a man who broke his fucking leg by getting it shut in a door on a Star Wars set. I don't think you you can blame Indiana Jones 5 for that. No, but it's like, I'm sorry. No, that's at least two hip replacements. You've got fucking well. He did it in the last one when his ass goes through the fucking windscreen of a car. It's like, why are you hurting granddad? (laughs) Why are you doing this to granddad? Stop it. And what is it about Harrison Ford these days, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, this this happened, and I didn't want to say it because, you know, in general, the, the Blade Runner sequel is like a fantastic film. Mm. But it doesn't matter what old role Harrison Ford is revisiting. Mm. It's just Harrison Ford. He doesn't look, it, it just looks like Harrison Ford has just stumbled onto set by mistake. And it's just like, in, in Blade Runner, he didn't look like Rick Deckard, right? He didn't have a feel of an older Rick Deckard. He just looked like fucking Harrison Ford. That's it, right? <laughs> it's like in this, that bit where he stood there in his shirt. It's like fucking Granddad Ford has fucking stumbled out of his trailer and has, you know, oh, fucking somebody put him back. He's not supposed to be on set yet. He, he doesn't look like Indiana Jones. He doesn't look like an mm. old Indiana Jones. There, mm. It just looks like Harrison Ford. Mm. That's it. Yeah. He's got Harrison Ford's haircut. He hasn't got to, like, you know, sort of, like, fucking neatly combed to one side like like Indiana Jones has, has had. You know, mm. it's, it's it's Harrison Ford's haircut. <laughs> it's not Indy's haircut. <laughs> it takes me right out of that bit there. It's like, yeah. oh. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of know where you're going with it, and it kind of goes back to something that Elton was saying about the CG. Because when I watched it the first time, I was watching it, and I was kind of like, I was kind of like, there's something about it that's just not sitting right with me. And I'm not mm. not doing that kind of, oh, no, it's not my Indiana Jones. I was, you know, I want it to be like it was when I was, like, 15. No, I'm not like that. I'm talking about, like, there's something intrinsically not there. It's like something ephemeral you can't put your finger on. I don't know whether it's like the the filming style with um with Spielberg obviously and uh, not behind the not behind the camera. I don't know uh, the directorial style. I don't know where it's the music. And by the way, can we just the it's 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 up there with Christmas music mm-hmm. in ad TV adverts. All Christmas music has to take a pop tr- track, slow it down to one beat per minute. And twinkle it on the ivories. That's go. that's that's what you have to do. But in this case, 
they they seem to do the opposite. What they do is they they find on their mixing desk Hans Zimmer tiki drum, <laughs> and then what they do is they play the play the same track but really slowly, but with a doom 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 doom. Uh, yeah. Didn't they do that with the the Mario one as well? Yep. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Dum 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 and you know, and similarly um, with Force Awakens, you know, that da da dum dum da 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 dum dum dum. It's like it's tr- like the films, the the trailers are trying with the music to tell you very, very, very quickly that it's epic and important without showing you anything that's epic and important. Yeah. It's trying to say, remember this. Yeah. That's what I, it's trying to say. And I don't want to get into the, oh, it's just member berries, but it really, because I don't really get the feeling of member berries, but what I do get the feeling of is, that going back to your point, Darren, is it feels like Harrison Ford's just sort of doing that 10th doc, Doctor dying regeneration thing of kind of revisiting all his past glories and just going, bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Well, when was the last time Harrison Ford didn't play Harrison Ford in a film. Was it Air Force One? No, it wasn't. Wasn't was there... he Harrison Ford by then? No, no, no. Because he was. He was. And was it Firewall? That one where he's got a where where he's got a hack. He's got to hack something while while his family's hot in being held hostage. Or no, actually, I tell you what. It's what what lies beneath. When he was actually oh, yeah. the bad guy, he was actually the bad guy. Um, I've, the mer- I've not actually seen that film. Ah, right, okay. Because that's that's quite an interesting one. It's a ghost story as well. And um, yeah. oh, Ree keeps trying to get me to watch it. It's interesting. I think it's worth a look, and it, we might we might well re- revisit it at some point. But but it, but it wasn't Harrison Ford. It was it was a character who looked like Harrison Ford. But when you see him in like I don't know Ender's Game or. Well, actually, at least they tidied him up in Ender's Game. They put him in a suit. So maybe that. <laughs> maybe Ender's Game. But I don't know. To me, the problem with it is, is as soon as you, you got a, you got a can't-win situation, you got it with Force Awakens with him playing solo, mm. and you got him with this, which is the film has to acknowledge that he's old. Yeah. Because you, you can't get around that. There's absolutely no way you can get around it. But the problem is, as soon as you acknowledge it, and that's kind of almost what got Sean Connery through things like The Rock, they didn't acknowledge it. They literally just went, no, it's 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 Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, he's a 70-year-old man. Please don't roll him through that fire pit in, in on The Rock. You know, please don't put him on that... Sp- <laughs> please don't put him on that nuclear submarine being shot at by a random, you know, sp- KGB spy... It's like, no, just don't acknowledge it. Just have him run around and just balls it out in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But with Harrison Ford, because he is Harrison Ford, they just go, got to have that line where he goes, oh, how tired we are, or something like that. He has to do a moment of kind of like, I am fucking old, you know. And he, you know, he does it in Blade Runner. He does it in this, and he did it in Force Awakens to all intents and purposes. And it just, to me, as soon as you acknowledge it, that almost is the the puncture. That's the balloon puncture, isn't it? Right. Mm. And then you get that moment where they try and make a joke out of it with him throwing the whip. Now, you know, Raiders Lost Ark, get the whip out and he's swinging it around and he's keeping everyone at bay while Marion's being kidnapped in, in, you know, Temple of Doom. He's doing the same thing with the sword, swordman, the thuggy, and and fucking, was it? In Last Crusade, he's throwing it about and he's kind of fighting Nazis. In this one, he's in a he's in an enclosed room with twenty people. He throws it about, and it's like it's like Granddad's wobbling a towel about, and the kids are just looking at him like, "What?" I'll tell you what, mate. That's that's a severe lathering of deep heat over those joints after that bit. That really is. <laughs> mm. That's that he, he's he's done for the for the day. <laughs> You know, yeah. So I think the problem. I think the problem for me is 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 twofold. They've tried to make it look epic. They but they've done the thing of going, yes, he's old. Yes, we acknowledge it. But then as soon as they do that, that kind of becomes the bit that sort of almost 
burst the balloon. Because you do, mm. you, you know I mean, they, like I say, you did it with, with False Awakens, where he's sort of like, you know, he finally gets the Falcon back, Huey, we're home, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and he's been a deadbeat dad, or, you know, or Blade Runner, you know, I you know, just want to sit out here in the desert, don't want anyone to come near me, sort of thing. It's just like, so, so you've literally got old man says get off my lawn 2049 i mean it's just ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for it thompson go for it <laughs> get off my lawn 2049 and again they've done it with this you know those days are over and it's like yeah but they did that in the last movie yes yeah when he's looking at the picture of Sean Connery going you know sometimes they just take just got to that point in life where they take more than you get yeah, you know. <sighs> I'm only doing you know, it I've, I've seen other actors playing sort of like, you know, old. They've got older now, and they play a character that they used to play, and they've played it a lot more convincingly, right? Mm. Um, whatever you think of, um, you know, they actually look like they're that character that's aged, right? They mm. don't look like they've stumbled on set by mistake. <laughs> I'll give you an example, right? Okay. Um, mm. And I'm not saying he's any great actor at all, uh, you know, mm. he's like Shakespeare, Just, whatever. Go on. But uh, Sly Stallone as Rambo, he mm. looks like Rambo old, right? I mean, he, I mean, Jesus Christ Almighty, you see the state of him, and it's just like, yeah, that's a man that's been through some shit. Yeah, and he's yeah, that's Rambo who's got old. Mm. That's it. I believe that. Yeah, but, but again, it doesn't. It doesn't. But again, the plot in the ra- the the last Rambo movie, as shit as it was, yeah, didn't sit there and have twenty minutes of him going, "I'm old." Yeah, <laughs> duh, duh, duh. Oh, no, I'm early not. bird starter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, my, my my steer lift ain't working no more. And I say, well, it ain't working no more. <laughs> I mean, you ain't got any of that stuff going on, and that's the pr- and that's the thing. It seems like Ford seems to have it built into his into his contract that there's somewhere in the script has to acknowledge that he's old and he's never coming back. Yeah, and he's got to look like Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, he's going to just it. wear just, whatever yeah. shirt he's wearing at the time. Yep, <laughs> Harrison Ford, twenty forty nine. Harrison Ford as you know, in the time of Indiana Jones. It's like he's he's like he's the Doctor. And he's just, you know, he's he's turned up in the TARDIS by accident. <laughs> he's just it's rocked like, up. Oh, yeah, I'm rocking up. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I so I, so to me that's the problem. I don't think I don't think the I'm not discounting the movie is completely fucking awful. But right now, I think it's right. starting from a very weak point mm. because it's not really. It's it's putting you the trailers putting the put the emphasis on everyone's old. This is his last hurrah. Here's the big epic music to tell you this is happening. <laughs> this is his last hurrah, um, except for the last one. That yeah. was his well, last. This is his last last hurrah. Well, frankly, you know what I would like. I would like what? the last shot of this to be. Him, I don't know, because the Dial of Destiny sounds like a time travel thing, so I have no idea yeah. if there is anything time travel in it. But I'd like him to go back in time, and <laughs> then the last thing you see is Indy's corpse being dug up and put in a museum. It belongs in a museum! Yeah. So do you! And then that's how it ends, with Indy's, <laughs> Indy's desiccated corpse in a glass cabinet with a fucking hat on that's been there for 10,000 years. There's going to be another one after this. You know that, don't you? It'll be uh, Indiana Jones and the starter of Early Bird. That's what it will be. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the saga holiday to Eastbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones and the... Oh, my hip. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the queue for the post office. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones and the... I'm twirly. <laughs> Yeah, go on. It, it seems to me Indiana Jones, the character, mm. he wouldn't be worried about getting old. <clears throat> no. He he loves these adventures. Fortune and glory kid. Yeah. 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 And so why would he be he'd be pushing himself to to just get the job done? Mm. And yet now we have this character that and I think it is more down to Ford himself. Mm. He's going. Well, you got, you got, you, you got to tell them that I'm old. 
Yeah. They may, they may not you know, know it you yet, guys but tell I'm, them that you're I'm not going to be yeah. around forever, am I? Yeah. So, you know, tell it, them that I'm old. Yeah. It does we know. Feel, we yeah. know. That's we what can, we're saying. Don't make four and five. Yeah. We can see it. <laughs> I mean, literally, we're not blind, dude. Cinema's a visual medium. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It does feel like a stipulation because it does seem to be a thing that seems to occur in only his films whereas like I say like a Sean Connery will plough on at age 80 and romance Mina Harker in fucking LXG in, in something that's so close to necrophilia it's not even close does <laughs> Patrick Stewart do it in, in Picard or anything like that I, I, well, well, he, a, he probably that will do in the third one cause oh yeah Beverly Crusher's back. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't even want to think about that. B2, 208 peas, slapping up, yeah. bumping brown, uglies. Chicken, brown cow, chicken, chicken, bow, wow. Well, it takes Engage. you all night to do what you used to do all night. <laughs> You're the <laughs> oldest swinger in town. <laughs> <laughs> your face is turning red because your pants are too tight. You're the oldest <laughs> swinger in town. Yeah, I, I, I mean, to be quite honest, Picard isn't really that kind of dude. Just as a comparison, I mean, he has yeah. had the romances, but I think that's been kind of limited right. in in the recent in the recent sort of renditions. You know what this mm. this movie pretty much like Picard season three is. I'm going to let other people watch it and tell me what they thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if it's not a big old waste of time like number two, then fine well oh. yeah but by that measure by that measure that means you're going to go and see avatar 2 are you going to go and no. see avatar 2 no i'm not it, do you know what everybody in the world has to see it just to break even on that <laughs> film because um, have you not heard about yes it? i have it's like you've got it's got to have more people go into it than watching re you know watching the avengers basically <laughs> twice right twice <laughs> to make the fucking thing break even yeah well you know well, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm not going to see Avatar. Actually, I should. You know what? I should have stuck the news jingle on the front of this, just for yeah. good measure. Avatar news now. <laughs> um, but, but no, I, I, I'll be honest with you. And I'm not seeing Avatar two. No, I couldn't. I no. mean, because um, I just got an email from View Cinema. Do you know how long the this next episode is? Oh God, is it four and a half hours or something? It's three hours twelve minutes, not including credits. Hang on, what's three hours? Avatar 2. Oh. Hmm. Avatar 2, the way of the bus, or the way of water, or way of... <laughs> the way of your water. Yeah. Your way. <laughs> the way I of the wazza, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. not going to go watch that. No, life's too short for three, hour, 12, three hours and 12 minutes of dances with puddles. I'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> just not. But um, you know, if anybody else is seeing it, feel free to send in any feedback you like. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Some impromptu newsy story thing. We'll leave it there. I think we'll leave it there because because mm. <laughs> otherwise it would just be us just going Grr, fucking Avatar. It'd be like two th- part party of the podcast like 2009. <laughs> but um. Let's uh, let's just leave it there. So we'll um, yeah. If anybody's got any thoughts on any of this stuff, by all means, send your feedback in <laughs> to feedback at Black Dog Podcast, or hit us up on the Facebook group, which is facebook dot com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast, or you can find us on Mastodon, which is um, Black Dog Podcast at podcasts dot social. There you go. I'm actually on Mastodon. I'm quite enjoying it. Um. Anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's leave it there. And then we will move on to this week's movie, which is my choice for Unconventional Movie Week, which Unconventional Christmas Movie Week, which is Brazil. Roll the jingle. Ho, ho, ho. It's the Unconventional Christmas Movie Season on Black Dog. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 holy shit! Right, so Brazil is a 
1985 cult movie dystopian black comedy film directed by Terry Gilliam, written by Terry Gilliam and Tom Stoppard, famous playwright, and Charles McNone, uh, McKeown, or McKeown, or McNone. I can't pronounce it, but just in case anyone wants to know, he also helped write with Gilliam uh, Time Bandits and was the guy in the op- office next door with the table. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sliding the table backwards and forwards. Anyway, so there you go. The film stars Jonathan Price, Robert De Niro, Kim Greist and Michael Palin uh, and Bob Hoskins and Ian Holm and Catherine Hel- Helmond. Um, the film centers on Sam Lowry, a low-ranking bureaucrat trying to find a woman who appears in his dreams while he's working in a mind-numbing job living in a small apartment set in a dystopian world where there is an over-reliance on poorly maintained uh, machines and a lot of bureaucracy. A lot of bureaucracy. Hmm. Um, the movie was released on uh, February 1985. And it had a budget of fifteen million dollars. How much do you think it made, Darren? Uh for that you would have to fill out a two one seven B form. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. Elton, um, some uh, acid mm. structural <laughs> surgery. Nice, but don't worry, you'll be looking as light as a spring lamb soon enough. Yes, I'll be back on my feet before you know it. Yes, be back on your feet. Actually, it only made $9 million. Right. Uh, um, so it was a complete flop, to say the least. Um, the the th- I, I mean, to be quite honest, this is like um, Star Trek, the motion picture size wiki. The history of the making of, of Brazil is long and wide and re- uh, lo- far-reaching and further, uh, just an enormous clusterfuck of... Mismanagement, um, directors being pushed off the set. It, it's 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 everything that a Terry Gilliam movie being made um, is has always been. Um, in, right. right down to the the famous bit where the um, actual studio refused to release the film uh, because Gilliam wouldn't let them release the cut that they wanted to do, which is called the Love Conquers All cut, uh, to the point where Gilliam spent a large amount of money taking out a full page ad in variety saying Sid Scheinberg when are you going to release my movie Brazil in in variety but like i say the, there are documentaries about this up the wazoo and i'm never going to do it justice just monologuing it off the uh, off the wiki but trust me it was not the easiest film to make right <laughs> for for gilliam or anybody involved, um, and so yes, yeah. The the, the ba- just look on if you're on Wiki, look under Battle for the Final Cut, and you'll kind of get the fact that there was a 132 minute version, a 142 minute version. There, yes, it was an absolute yeah tire fire of a production. And they have different endings as well, don't they? Yes, much like Blade Runner, in fact, which I think we might bring up as a comparison somewhere along the line. But it, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the the finale in Blade Runner with Deckard driving off into the f- driving off into the Green Mountains, which was nicked straight from The Shining. Um, you know, very much the same. There was a Brazil Cup, which has him sort of escaping and off into the sunset, um, which didn't really. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I read. Didn't it finish? You know, when they go off and they're in that house that they're dragging mm. along. Mm. That's yep. where it finishes. Yeah, that's as, as I understand it. Like I say, I've only seen it twice right. in my entire life, and that that ending wasn't in the version that I ever saw. So I don't know. Oh yeah, the Sid Sheinberg's version was a ninety-four minute Love Conquers All cut. So it went from 142 minutes down to 94 minutes. Right. There you go. Right. <laughs> so as you can well imagine, it was probably sh- sort of absolutely cut to ribbons. Um. Anyway, so we will leave it there. Like I say, there's there are hundreds of tr- of of think pieces, um, making of things. There's a lovely Criterion edition. Available on Blu-ray with a massive documentary on the making of. 
um which is well worth a look um so yeah we'll just we'll just skip lightly over that i won't go into the accolades or any of that stuff because you know we don't bother with that anymore but yeah it's 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 a let's say it's a polarizing movie let's put it that way mm. um so let's go around the table i mean have you guys ever seen this film before we get any further never never elton no never okay in which case we'll just go around the usual way then in which case elton let's start off with you just top line what did you think of brazil confusing mhm troublesome mhm i really enjoyed it up until a certain point which i couldn't quite put my finger on it and then i it just lost me mm. okay so i really struggled with this okay but it did have very similar vibes to that Baron Munchausen mm-hmm. thing. I mean, yeah. You said that's the same director, isn't it? Yes, same director. Um, and Jabberwocky as well. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that and going, oh, I'm really interested in the first 10 minutes. And uh, uh, now I'm not. Yeah. Mm, and okay. I, it's something I was sat down and okay right here we go as soon as i pressed play i was like oh well over two hours oh, i wasn't mm. expecting that at all mm. sorry about that i i might i i, I saw that because i started watching it yesterday yeah. and i thought oh god these guys are going to kill me <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I, I just wasn't expecting it and so i thought okay right this is going to be a full hearty meal mm. instead and it is mm. But man, you gotta really, really pay attention to it. Mm. And yeah. I think this film will it will reward you on subsequent viewings. Definitely. But yes. are you really gonna wanna watch it two, three times quite close to each other? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, Maybe I mean personally. Before we move to Darren, I would say it's a, it is like for me, it's a film. I've, I've only seen it twice, and the gap was twenty odd years. Mm-hmm. And could have done with another five. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I I kind of watched that, and I thought, yeah, I'm. It's it's far enough away that I don't remember certain bits of it, and it's it's near enough that I feel like I'm not going into this completely blind. Yeah. So, yeah, I th- I think it's not it's not like a film that you walk straight out of the cinema and go, "Oh, I wonder if he gets away this time and <laughs> go and watch it again." Yeah. It's no, it's a bit like, yeah, it's it's like reading 1984. You know you've you've read something important and well done, but fuck no, you're not going to go and, you know, read this. You're not going to read it again or watch it again in a hurry because mm. it's not a happy film. Um. Anyway, yeah, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll leave it there with you. We'll just move to Darren quickly and then myself and then we'll go into the actual discussion because I yeah. think it's going to be a lot of, well, what about kind of discussion. Mm. So, Darren, what about you? You've never seen it before as well, so... That's right. Go for it. What did you quickly... Th- what did you think? Sorry, not quickly. What did you think of it? Sorry. Um... This is this is the problem with people saying things like "this is the best movie ever," right? Mm. Because you know I've heard it said by that sort of similar thing by people, and over years a film like this, if you don't watch it, its legend gets built up and built up, and then your mind starts filling in the blanks and everything. Mm. So, um, to its detriment, I I had that mm. right. That's it. It's um, it's a whole thing of hearing this legend of this thing and mm. it turning out to be not exactly what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, and I must admit, last night I tried watching it. I started it twice and I fell asleep watching. It just I didn't. I I noticed the <laughs> runtime as well, and, and it's like I'm getting through a lot of meaty stuff. And it's like fuck me, there's still an hour and a half to go. Mm. And it's just like, uh, so I thought, you know what, I'll watch it tomorrow. 
Mm. And I thought, and I thought I'll carry on from the point I got to here, but it's like, no, give it a full go. Mm. Just start watching from the beginning again. Mm. <laughs> um, and it's like it started. I actually started liking it, mm. right? Uh, to begin with, but yeah. I'm afraid it, 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 the, the way. I mean, there's like a thousand and one different cuts. Then this cut, the whoever was putting it together just kind of loses it at the end and it just mm. oh, I don't know it just it just went Gilliam for Gilliam's sake it mm. uh, so I liked him but I, I think Elton really summed it up well mm. I'm sitting there I am that meme with the pointy fingers upwards on Facebook right I'm, I'm yeah. that this yeah I'm I'm kind of like that with it which is a real shame because I feel as though I should, considering mm. how it's been revered. Yeah, you know, yeah. You sit there and you think, "Am I seeing the Emperor's new clothes?" Or, uh, you know, it's it's part of my soul dead. Um, is All this of the above? I'm... Yeah, both <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. So um, I enjoyed bits of it. Mm. Um, I just thought it went kind of suddenly left field. Yeah, much. it it does go on the wonk quite quickly to yeah, sort of midway through. I mean, for me, as I say, I've seen it like twice. This is being the second time, and you know, with a twenty plus year gap in between. Yeah, and I bring up Blade Runner in earlier because I felt like I'd watched Blade Runner for the first time, and just what I mean by that is when I watch Blade Runner the very first time yeah. I sat there going, I like the visuals. I like all the stuff that's going on, but there's, there's obviously something I'm missing because it's not really clicking. Mm. And then it was only when I saw it again and it was like, Oh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm warming up. I'm, I'm getting in the groove with it that it became the film in my mind that I think it is. Yeah. Brazil is clearly doing that to me now because there are bits in brazil that i just go oh for god's sakes fuck off mainly involving mainly involving the um the main female character and how um jonathan you know um catherine whatever her name is i can't remember her surname sorry yeah um yeah uh was it uh kim grist i mean her character is is just wasted and just pointless and how the film turns on a dime with him on that character it just makes just throws a lot of the the subtlety out the window so a lot of that bit i just nah mm -hmm. but yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you on that that yeah. um there is a point where i mm. started really disliking his character and that was the bit in the truck yeah the bit in the truck absolutely I fucking hated him it's like, yeah. oh, what is going on here? Why is he being such a fucking wanker? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and so there's that. But the way I felt about the opening, and it's going to sound weird isn't it, when you consider the time scales, but how I felt about the first, say, hour and 30 minutes, this time round is completely different to how I felt about it the first time round. And I, I don't know if that's because I'm older, because I just see the world a bit more cynically now um because in the intervening years i've watched more dystopian fiction read more st dystopian fiction you know and i've kind of got into a groove with that kind of stuff and i and i just kind of saw instead of seeing just like random images thrown up on the screen i'm now seeing oh that's a metaphor oh bureaucracy look at look you know this you know you know the fact that reliance on technology but it doesn't work and there's assholes who just pretend that they've got some kind of you know right to your life because they because they've got some kind of skill that you don't have you know mm. the fact that paperwork is just piling on top of you i mean it's it's kind of in, in interesting that um the last time i watched it i was working at cartoon mm. and was in a despite being a massive corporate place the general atmosphere was more freewheeling and just ta da off we go we just do whatever you want to do da 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 you know within rules obviously but then where i'm at now 
everything is Brazil. I mean, it is, you know, you sign 15 forms just to put a hat on. You know, you you have to go you have to go through seven different um you know creative courses about you know understanding how asbestos works even if you never ever go on a fucking asbest go on a site with asbestos you know what i mean it's it's all just you know like like we uh, just just today just today yeah we've been told that we got we've got to go to this company event and then it's like this event's gonna like bring you together in teams of three hundred, and you're gonna be able to do all these what? creative things. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't don't even go there. To bring you together in teams of three hundred. Yeah, yeah, three hundred people in a team. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't just don't. Anyway, so they're going on. They're going on about this, and then in the meantime, you're still expected to do your work. And I've got a job which has got a deadline for next week. Now I know that Thursday, I'm gonna be gone. I'm literally going to be. Almost out of. I'm going to be outside of London. I'm going to be miles away from anywhere. I'm not supposed to bring any kit, so I'm literally losing a day on a really tight deadline job. And then they then they send you a digital form, which says, um, bef- just to just to register the effect of this um of this wonderful thing that you've been obligated to go to. We've decided to send you a well being um slider a slider form. Asking you, um, asking you how you feel in terms of anxiety, how you feel about terms of tension, well-being, and mental worth, and you know all these things. And it's like I'm as tense as fuck. I'm going to put everything down to, you know. Yes. And they go, thank you very much. We'll send you this form again after you've had the event. Mm-hmm. And by the way, here's a digital balloon for you to pop. And it's like. What a, a, digi- a digital <laughs> balloon, and it's funny because now, you know, like I said, going from going from free and easy hippy dippy kind of work environment here, we're all creatives to to this kind of mad. We care about you, honestly, but we're doing everything we can to literally drive you mental. I'm just like I understand Brazil 100 percent more. <laughs> it's just like I'm right there. So for me that. This time round, I'm just like, yeah, I, I, yeah, this is genius. I'm totally down with this. I'm absolutely right there. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I, I had a much better. Uh, that's a very long winded way of me getting some work rant off my chest, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I, I, I'm feeling this film a lot more because I think my life experiences have changed a lot more. Um, yeah, so a thumbs up for me, with the exception of certain characters and events which kind of spin everything off into a random mess but anyway so let's get into going further if ladies and gentlemen this is where from here on in we start talking spoilers and i would just like to say on the case on the note of spoilers if anybody does want to sort of just catch up on brazil go and do it Go and watch it. It's on Amazon. And there's another version that's on Disney. Don't know if they're the same version, but go oh, and have I, a look. I watched the one that was on Disney. I watched the one that was on Amazon. Ah. Mm. Interesting. interesting. Mm. So, anyway, there's that. But also, if anyone wants to just want to do one of those kind of Cliff Notes kind of YouTube videos, don't look at the one about the Telegraph. The, tel- the Telegraph newspaper put out a, you know, 50 greatest cult movies you know, and they do a little mini, like eight minute sort of precy on the film. They literally start the very first scene they show you for Brazil in their review is the very end of the film. Oh. So, yeah, maybe just yeah, skip that. Give tele, give the Telegraph a bit of a swerve if you decide to do that sort of thing. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So we're going to go on now, and we're going to start talking spoilers. Um, so please, just you know, stop here. Know that we, you know, there's two of us who are feeling bemused and confused, and one of us who's <laughs> seeing the film in a slightly different light, given his life experiences. <laughs> I think that sums it up, doesn't it? I think that's a the thumbs up. Well, it's, so, it's interesting because my hmm. kind of work life has been this film anyway. 
my whole work experience has been this. I, you, I, I've I've known no different. You've worked in ducts. Have you worked in ducts? How's your ducts? <laughs> Don't even ask me to quote this. There are no quotes coming out from me. We have ducks in three hundred different colours. <laughs> yes, the old ducks looking tired. <laughs> these these terrorists. You know what is wrong with them? They're sore losers. <laughs> <laughs> they just, just really upset. If they just played the game, they'd get more out of life. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so let's go into it. Spoilers ahoy, ladies and gentlemen, be warned. If you carry on now, it's your own fault. So, first off, let's go into the to the world. Hmm. I mean, how did you feel about it? I mean, I know you guys are all a bit bamboozled and in fact it might be better just to ask you to ask me uh, ask questions if you know what I mean but I, I first I just wanted to see how you felt about it how it was filmed shot all that kind of thing how are you feeling about it because Gilliam has this kind of weird filming style where he puts everything on a fisheye lens when he wants to make things feel unreal or distor- disorientating and I was just wondering if maybe that put you off a little bit uh, no, not for me personally. I mean, no? I expect this kind of thing of Terry mm. Gilliam anyway. Mm. I've got to say, yeah, to tell the truth. It's, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you, Elton? I really, really like the look of it. Mm. I like the. I like all the sets. Mm. I like the over compli- complicity of everything that is going on around them in the corners Mm. in the corners of the screens that Mm. we don't really see i like all all the little set pieces as well Mm. (coughs) like the the little kids that were running around Mm. i I think they were holding (laughs) one of their mates up um yeah and there's no real need to have that there i don't think Mm. Mm. unless that came back to be something else later on i don't know Mm. but that was the thing i i went into this and I would, I can see why people can really get into this. Mm. It's it's a world that not that they want to live in, but they really want to visit. They they enjoy immersing themselves in it because mm. it is not like real life. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 to me, the thing I noticed this time round, and this kind of. Oh, goodness me. What was that? Sorry, that was just me. Sorry. I bent down to pick something up. <laughs> That's the sake. microphone. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, the thing I the thing I noticed this time, is, and then again, I think, because in the intervening years, we've reviewed a couple of the films that this thing has drawn influence from, and okay. one of them was Me- Metropolis. Ah, uh, okay. Um, you know, all those kind of big, long shadows and big massive doors and everything's brutalist architecture and it's all very you know stark and you know it's futuristic but it's also kind of film noir looks like it's from the 50s but it's the 50s if we went into the future with it hmm. so a lot of that stuff i kind of really appreciate but it's uh, i'm trying to work out what the best to say about it i mean it's it's for me, the the world kind of, I don't know, the world is is represented as this huge place that is, as just well, it's like the metaphor when he's fly when he's having one of the dreams and he's flying around and he's all in his freedom and he's got his wings and he's flying through the sky and then this city just kind of rises up and it's just these faceless blocks. Yeah, yeah. and that to me kind of symbolizes the setting. You know, it's it's just like here's here's this massive edifice of just awfulness and blank blank shit just blocking your way in every every direction you go you can't get away from this place and it's just you know utterly utterly sort of you know it's just it's just a massive impervious wall with windows in it really the whole bill the whole thing and underneath it underneath it all is this kind of garbage pile of ducts you know, which is like a living, breathing, like thing. Because when you open it up, it's all kind of <gasps> this is kind of weird organic noises coming out of this thing, mm. and it's just like, and it's 
it's almost like the city's been built around the ducts of some. So it's almost like symbolic of um, walls put around a thing. This thing was a free living thing, and then we've just built walls around it, and it's kind of all trapped in the walls. All its organs are trapped in the walls. Sort of like symbolic of your of the characters. All the characters are all trapped in their little box. Yeah. And even the ducts are the lungs and the breathing of some massive animal that's since been, you know, blocked in. But um, I mean, maybe that's but I, maybe that's just me. I don't, <laughs> maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. Um, but how did you feel about the story itself? I mean, the idea that. You know, he's having all these dreams, he's looking for freedom and all this sort of thing, and then this this woman just magically appears, looks exactly like the one in his dream. Well, okay. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. <clears throat> mm. I The story I really struggled with. Mm. As to because there was a moment where he, I think he got promoted and I know he was looking for something and then he thought well i can take the promotion that my mum gave me Mm. and then he got promoted Mm. and at that point i was kind of losing it going okay well i'm i'm not too sure how we got here and where we're going with this Mm. but what i took from it is towards the very very end Mm. he is lobotomized is he lobotomized well, that's what I thought. Mm. So, all the flying around dreams, mm. I'm guessing, are not taking part as he as we see them. They are more, you know, like um, uh, Dunkirk mm. with with uh, Tom Hard uh, Tom H- Hardy flying yeah. around. Yeah, and it's all chopped up, but it, it, it's all one little thing, isn't it? Oh, so you're saying it's out of sequence. It's way out of sequence, yes. All of these dreams are right at the very end where he's being lobotomized. Ah. That's okay. the way I saw it anyway. Which then brings you to the question of how much of the whole rest of the film is real. I suppose, yeah. I'm not trying to go down that road. No, it's okay. Don't worry. I mean, you know, it's, we're only 27 minutes in. Your tinfoil hats come on, so it's, it's Sorry, fine. No, I, I, dude, I mean dude, <laughs> dude, this is the kind of film. this is the kind of film that lends it to that. I mean... Yeah. Trust me, it's like you know, like that room two three seven, yeah, you know, with bloody the, the Shining, mm-hmm. and, you know, where you have got twenty seven people and they've all got twenty seven different ideas of what it all means. Yeah, I mean, Brazil is one of those films. You can right. put you can put five film critics in a room and say, "What is Brazil about?" And after the first couple of things, you know, brutalism, bureaucracy. You know that sort of thing, the need for freedom and love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're you'll, the themes for it. Yeah, yeah but you with after but after that, everyone will just go off on a tangent. Yeah, and so don't worry, there is no tin foil hat zone for this. But I mm. trying to follow the actual story. <coughs> Sorry, mm. it was it was quite tough trying to work out what the hell was going on. He mm. okay, so someone is it Tuttle? Mm. No, Buttle has mm. been wrongfully arrested, taken off, and removed from his family. R- removed from f- his life. <laughs> because yeah. um, a fly got stuck on the ceiling and a uh, bloke was whacking it and it fell down into the machine and that kind of fucked it up, yes? Well, yes, but you, you straight away you miss a metaphor. This this film's all about metaphors. Did you, yeah, did, I, did you I, get I, it? I, I don't know if you remember what I said in my week. Yep. I've been quite poorly. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> so it's okay. No, no, I'm I think not, maybe I'm not... that would have attributed to my misunderstanding. No, on a I'm, lot not of try- these I'm not trying. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to slam you, but I, no, I, I was literally going to just say something. But I just want to see if Darren got it. Darren, the thing with the fly where he knocked it and it fell in the in the in the yeah. typewriter. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a bug in the system. Oh, I didn't oh, think of it like that okay. actually, but um, yeah. I suppose it is. It was literally a bug in the system. Indeed. Indeed. And it causes battle instead of tuttle. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's like a lot of (laughs) clerical mistakes can lead to absolute fucking disaster. Mm -hmm. Uh, When it comes to things like government, you know, just Mm -hmm. get one word wrong out of place or whatever and that's it, you know. 
So so go on in, Al, and would you go on? What were you saying? So so we get the bug in the system, creates buttle to t- or tuttle to buttle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <coughs> and the wrong person gets taken away, which should have been the De Niro character. Yes, that's right. Okay, so I'm along for the ride at the moment, mm-hmm. and he's a terrorist. He's he's not part of the union. He's he he le- he wasn't part of the central services, which is the the duct main- maintenance guys. Right. So he's basically doing work. He's his his form of freedom. Darren, feel free to jump in here, mate, because I, I, yeah. otherwise I'm just going to waffle and, and no one will get a word in. His form of freedom, his form of rebellion, is to not fill out 700 forms just to repair an air duct. Yeah, okay. Which so, is the, the strife that we have to go through on our daily basis nowadays. Yeah, so because of that, because of that, then what you've got is he's a he's an enemy of the state because he's not filling in the forms yeah and he's not being registered so they want rid of him well they show that when they take the guy and then they have to make the woman sign it and then sign another one because he has to have a receipt for her receipt and it's just hmm. yeah here's a receipt <laughs> for your husband and here's a receipt for my receipt for your receipt yeah uh, it's just stupidness isn't it it's, oh. yeah hmm. All yeah. the stuff I see on a daily basis, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, do we really have to do this? Yeah, yeah, it's it's ass covering. Mm. Yeah, it's ass covering. It's the total opposite of the last film we saw, where we were saying, "Do you remember when pe- we could ask people for favors?" Any, but now <laughs> when, when, when we could send psychopaths off with the uh, bicycle repair man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but this is well that mm. it's not my job so i, I need a, a form for this and i need four forms for this because it's not yeah. my job yeah yeah that's it that's exactly it um yeah it's it's not it's not the fact well go on it, they they take they take battle away yeah right. and and the mm. and the and the real problem isn't that he died it's the fact that a mistake was made a mistake was made and then that bounces through because there's like a, a, a check that comes back and they've never had one of these return checks, have they? No, because because they've had to acknowledge a mistake. Yeah. And mm. it's it's new to the system. Mm. And and that's where the, the vision of the lady comes from as well, because she's the the woman upstairs from the bottles. That's right, and she wants to go and and take care of a wrongful arrest. So, after all that, and I think we're like into an hour of the actual movie, I start to lose it a little bit. <laughs> That's where I start to lose it. <laughs> hmm. I'm watching it, but it's just not going in because, do you know what? There's too much goodness in the actual... I'm not saying it's a bad movie at all. I, I really appreciate the atmosphere and the world that they have created here. Because there's there's so much there's like little dials that you have to look at the computer screens which are really tiny but they use the magnifying glasses to make them much bigger, I think that's glorious. Mm. But I'm spending time on looking at that and going, oh wow, that looks great. I wonder how that works. Mm. And then the story becomes like less and less interesting to me, and mm. the actual world is more interesting than what I'm being presented. Okay. So okay then. Well, what about you then, Dal? How are you for following this story? Just, just I was because... okay once I started watching it during the day, when <laughs> nowhere near bedtime. <laughs> okay, as I normally am, and I thought I started finding some real, like, nice bits in there. And um, I noticed there's nods to James Bond, there's nods to Blade Runner in this, um, and I'm talking about the bit where. Um, uh, the uh, Larry's boss says to him, mm. "Let's go home before mm. they close the place up." And he's on the what their version of the underground is, mm. and it's um, well, in fact, it was before that. There's a bit where it's he's uh, building a picture, 
mm. on screen on one of the readouts, and you can hear the saxophone playing. Mm. And it just reminded me of that bit in the apartment with Rick Deckard when he's going through the photographs. Some of the some of the sound effects are the same as well. The bam, yeah. bam, bam, ducka, 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 exactly. ducka, ducka. it's that yeah. sort of world where it's the you know it's a it's in the future, but the technology is really quite retro and mm. and old. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> um, there is the the nods to James Bond in there is mm. the guitar that plays alongside the saxophone. It sounds like it's about to go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that there's that in there yeah. um so the influences i could see stuff that it's included in there the nods mm. to various things yeah um i enjoyed seeing those mm. especially looking at the see the blade runner stuff there and mm. it's just like ah mm, yeah there mm. we go there's that uh following the story um it was just like uh, I was following it, as I say, I followed it a lot better mm. as I was watching it during the day. Mm. Um, and I was following, I, I was really quite enjoying the film mm. up until around about a half hour, 45 minutes before the end. Yeah. And especially getting near the end, it was just kind of a bit much. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, you're being Gilliam for Gilliam's sake now. You're not actually telling me anything. You're just throwing some shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. So right. I don't know whether it's this cut, whether it was a person who wrote it or what, but as we've seen, um, editing on a movie is, you know, can be very important mm. to how the story plays out. So so what what where did it lose you? I mean, you know you were saying about it kind of like forty five minutes yeah. from the end. Was there a bit where it's just like you go, Oh no? Um, I think I think I think it was a bit where he sat in the truck mm. and he just acted like a complete out twat. And it's just mm. like, do you know what? I was kind of rooting for you up until this point, And now I'm not because what are you doing? Why are you, why'd you keep grabbing the fucking steering wheel? Mm. What, what are you doing? Why'd you keep flipping switches over here or, or, you know, throwing the gear stick into a different gear? Mm. What, 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 what's the point of that? You know, you just, you're just going to get yourself killed. Mm. And that's what I stopped kind of liking yeah. his character. I, you know, my sympathies for him were slowly started draining away. Mm. You know? Yeah. I mean, did, did you feel the same? Was that the point where you lost it, Elton, or was it? Um, I, I'm not too sure. I don't think so. I, I think I, I was just concentrating on what was going on around everything. Mm. I was really interested in the little details. Mm. Mm. whereas I was looking at that and I thought I'd be able to follow along with the story at the time mm. but I, I I get all the details that or, or the the actual themes that it has where mm. okay you need to fill out this form and you it, the corporation is an absolute ball ache but we have to go along mm. with it because that's how we live our lives I understand that mm. but this seemed to drill down on that. It really doubled down on that, didn't it? Yeah. And I, I think because of that, that's where I was like, well, I kind of understand the story. I'll back away from that and concentrate on the details. Mm. And because I did that, once we got to him trying to find this woman, mm. then I was, why are we trying to find this woman? Is it because he's in his dream or, or, or what? And, and Mm. just didn't quite I, I think I lost it there yeah okay right well I mean to what both things kind of answer this the, the the question I mean the bit that Darren's talking about which is which is also the bit that I kind of go <laughs> where he kind of starts acting like a dick yeah. Is that when you say in the actual cab itself, where he's like, "No, there's nothing to see here." All that sort yeah, of yeah, get the stuff out. Yeah, and then yeah. and then when they drive, then when she's driving away, and they see the barrier coming down, and she's like, "Just relax, just relax." And then for reasons that make absolutely zero sense, he just you know slams her foot on the um, accelerator and then drives her straight through the barriers and gets mm -hmm. them caught by the police and all that kind of stuff. That, watching that, still makes me go, oh, there's got to be a better way than doing that. 
rather than just having him randomly go crazy over a girl that he's never met before and only seen in his dreams. Or the other alternative is it's a symbol it's a symbol of his empathy. His his growing empathy. And now, you know, feel free to stand there and go, that's bollocks, you're making it up, Medgarth. Mm. Right? <laughs> but so uh, tempting. So tempting. But um <laughs> but at the start of the film, there's you know, people are going about their business and random things are exploding. Yeah. And finally, when they go into that restaurant where he's in the restaurant with his mother. Oh, and, and they put don't they put like shields up as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. The the, the door don't explodes. Worry about what's going on over there? Yeah, don't worry does, about it. Doesn't normally happen to us. Um, and she's like, "Oh, can't we do something about this?" And he goes, "Oh, yes, right away, madam." And he just puts up a screen mm. while there's people over in the background, sort of screaming and on fire, and <laughs> the doors have been blown off and everything. And Sam doesn't react. And the general gist is kind of like, you know, that everyone's numb to it. There's this kind of constant underlying terrorist, uh, nebulous terrorist threat. And yet, when it gets to later on, and he sees, sees, um, was it uh, Jane or Jill, when he sees Jill in real life, it's like his dreams coming through. And it's like the the dream of freedom that he's had all the way through the film. This dream of escape and being a hero and being like the guy who thwarts like the robot samurai and the baby faced zombie things and all this kind of stuff. It's suddenly presented right in front of him. So he goes into this kind of really lame hero mode for someone who doesn't understand and he's basically he's he's, he's lost his, lost his mind and so his reaction isn't rational it it's not supposed to be rational but what it is 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 a it's it's like if we watch die hard we think oh yeah that's what we'll do but as soon as we're presented with a 80 floor lift shaft with no lift at the bottom of it are we really going to successfully jump from one vent to the other using a using a gun strap yeah you know what we do is we probably slide out let go and then slide 80 floors to our death no you slide out until the point of i won't be able to get back up from here so i'm gonna go back up yeah i'm scared and then you spend the rest of the evening stuck in an air vent um but you know what i mean it's like you think you're the hero and you've got these big dreams of being the hero but as soon as you're presented with the opportunity to be the hero, you you make a complete fucking hash of it. Yeah, and you don't know how to react on that, exactly. do you? Because it's your first time there. But then what happens is just after that, they go into that super into that shopping that shop that where whatever shop it is, they go into that shop. There is another bomb explosion, but instead of ignoring it like everyone else does. What does Sam do? He actually runs towards them to help the victims. Mm. Mm. He does, yeah. He goes in there and he throws his coat over one and he tries to find Jill and he tries to dig her out of the rubbish and he starts calling up the police and he's going, people are hurt here, help them. And the police are like, yeah, whatever, and just bash the fuck out of him and take him away. But that's the point. It's It's the start of someone who's been emotionally stunted and locked in suddenly finding that, you know, his dreams are actually real and he can be a hero. But mm. instead of being a real hero with silver wings and swords, what he is is a nebbish dimwit who's wearing a suit that's not his own and generally fucking things up. The actual yeah. reality. The actual hero, reality yeah. hits him, yeah. And so even though that whole bit on the on the truck in and around the truck for me is the weak moment it is the the weak link i think that's partly to do with the fact that it's made worse by a couple of scenes later once he's escaped to find that she suddenly loves him and that to me is just like a really what mm, no okay fine you've you've lost me 
because it just suddenly turns into the Blade Runner thing with Rachel. You know, she just turns up, and one minute she turns up and she's just all Ice Queen, and then five seconds later, Deckard's slapping her around and going, kiss me. You know, it's just like, you just kind of go, mm, what, huh, what? Mm-hmm. Mm? And it's the same deal. You know, if he had sort of grown empathy and then they'd grown to like each other over the rest of the film... I'd accept it, but what happens is he does that thing. It looks really awkward. It feels really awkward, but then it's supposed to. But then five minutes later, they're in bed together, and you're like, no, no, see, you've gone too far the other way, and you're yeah. playing into his, you're playing into this this fantasy that suddenly he's this you know sexy heroic man who she just instantly falls in love with because uh-huh. he got her out of a bomb. Yep. But then you get to the, well, how much of that now is real? Because, let's be honest, at that point, he'd already been captured. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, he's back in his job. And then next thing you know, she's loving, she's all around and sort of snuck around and she saved him from the, the you know. Yeah, the what, uh, what was going to happen to him. His yeah. fate. His fate. They call it. His fate. Hmm. What hmm. what you're saying about them living around uh, like the, the terrorist actions and hmm. the bombs and stuff like that? Hmm. Do you do you not think that they live in a, a bit of a shit world where nothing really quite works anyway, hmm. and everything is a bit crap, isn't it? Look at the hmm. food that they're served up. Hmm. It's all just coloured piles of the same stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's just tinted color mm. it's, it's, and they're told that this is the salmon or this is the steak <laughs> yeah it, yeah it's all oh, right it's it's so fucking weird and and the the uh they are the waiter asking no sir you must say a number could you say a number please i i mm. need to know the number which one is yeah yeah it's but all that, a bit weird it is weird but it's symbolic that's the thing the whole oh, thing yeah. The whole thing with numbers, having to do numbers, is because everyone's got their job. They have to stick to their lane and do their job, and they can only react in the right way, as dictated by all these millions of rules that we don't know about and can't see. Yeah. You know, he can't just take the order of a steak. He has to take the order number two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because that follows the process. Because if he goes into the kitchen, let's just say he goes into the kitchen and says, right, he wants a steak. Mm. And they're going to go, what? What is that? Yeah. They know what number two is. Mm. And the fact is, it's no different. It's really, it's just picking a colour, really. Mm. And that's and that's kind of the whole thing underlying the whole movie. It's not that, it's not that people are, I don't know, not that people are subjugated. But what they are is they're just, everyone's got their little niche, their little role they want to stay in. And they want to follow those rules, regardless of how ridiculous those rules are. Mm. Because those rules make their life make sense. And yeah, do what they... Yeah. If you come out of that lane, it all gets a bit confusing. And you start to see the light. You mm. know, the way the system looks after itself is by keeping people in its lane you mm. can't have people coming out of the lane and going but what about this what about this what about that because yeah, that's not how yeah yeah that's how yeah. the system keeps ticking over mm. it's it's the it's the prison from andor you know everyone's saying don't say anything don't say anything and it's like <laughs> nobody's listening <laughs> you know and it's it's everyone it's the prisoners keeping themselves in check yep you know, yeah, it's that thing, and and you know, sorry, I'm, I realise I'm waffling. Darren, do you <laughs> do you want to do you want to throw something in? Is there anything you want to discuss? Anything you want to throw up? Because I just otherwise I just know I'm just going to go off into the sort of like oh, and this means that, and that means this. I, I'm happy with the waffling. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good discussion point well it ain't discussion um, is it if it's just me going i'm this and this <laughs> i just i don't want everyone i don't want you just to be sitting there going i could have just stayed i could have just logged off and gone to bed early <laughs> indeed um okay well if there's a criticism i've got a level mm. 
at this. I don't think it goes hard enough on the totalitarian state because it's mm. it's car it's it's beating heart. This is supposed to be 1984. Mm. Right, that's what this is really supposed to be. This is when it boils down to it. This is what it's a parody of, mm. okay? And it mm. replaces some stuff with things about bureaucracy, right? Yeah, it's a it's very Kafka oh, in that sort very of way. Good. Yeah, yeah, right. Because mm. um, uh, I don't know, um, you know, how much mm. Kafka or anybody here has read, <laughs> but um, mm. there is a, a story called the Trial. Mm. And it's all about a man who gets arrested mm. and um, he gets put through this entire process mm. and he doesn't know what he's done. They don't tell him. No. And by the end of it, they just let him go anyway. Yeah. But they never tell him. <laughs> and it's got a lot of bureaucracy in that mm. as well. Right? Mm. And this is, this is what this world is, right? It yeah. is a, a, a big Kafkaesque mm. um production that's it yeah right um mm. i don't think it goes enough on the george orwell side of things mm. you know um because it just seems a bit i don't know it, it's the way it's portrayed here is um it's mm. only as big brother as the plot wants it to be mm. at any one point yeah you know, it's like I don't think in Georgia was nineteen the world of nineteen eighty four. You would have bunches of kids running around, setting the light to things. Mm. That shit would have been dealt with, right? There would not be yeah. any visible poor on the streets. They'd be rounded up, taken away, and shot probably somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, from from my perspective, I think I think thinking it's all well. I think all will is the starting point, but I don't think. Mm. Oh, God, I'm I'm really aware that I, I'm about to launch into another one, but it's, it's <laughs> the thing. The thing with the parody of Orwell is that it is to show how different it is. Because what you've got with Orwell is you have an absolutist kind of, you know, totalitarian government. The the dystopia of of this the dystopia of you know brazil is more about the fact that it's it's not a dystopia of of actual malice and control it's a it's a dystopia that's ro risen up from a bunch of people making rules and then other people making rules and rules on rules and then rules on rules and rules and rules and it's about people not wanting to take responsibility Oh, I'll tell you what, it could mm. be, mm. right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's an actual, um, mm. it's, a, it's a damning indictment on, on the English attitude, which is don't put your head above the pit. Mm. Don't, don't stand out, mm. right? Stick in your lane, stay where you are, just yeah. play the game and you'll get the most out of life, even though you really won't. But it's that... Yeah. Don't draw attention to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Don't stand it. Don't be special. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's stick to your lane, stick yeah. to your lane, and do what you know. Do what you you know. Do what you do best, which is stay where you are, and don't cause any ripples. Yes, mm. that mm. that is it. You know, you can complain all you want, but the moment you do something about it, mm. you know. Well, that's that's why they go after Tuttle, isn't it? I mean that's why yeah. they that's why they're after him in the first place because you know rather than filling out all the forms what he go, does is just goes in and fixes fixes the problem that yeah. would have taken 6 months to fix indeed you know so uh, yeah so i think uh, one of its little swipes is at english society of that hmm. time um anyway well, is it of that time? I mean, how different is it from now? I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, it's... Um, I would say it's different now because we have people going on TV talking about their feelings. Mm. Right? You have... You know, I know these programs don't exist anymore, mm. but, you know, you have you have programs like things like Trisha, yeah. right, where people go on to tell mm. a person that they've been having an affair with someone else where this sort of shit should be kept in private 
but no we have to broadcast it now i have to tell everyone because that's the right thing to do i have to i have to make sure there's an audience of five million watching me when mm. i do this rather than take that one person who's going to feel bad enough about this situation as it is right mm. to to top that off i'm going to make sure they're humiliated in front of everybody so i can get my 15 minutes of fame that is not an english attitude that is a very american attitude mm. and like a lot of people you know it we follow mm. suit with america i think we catch up yeah um, we're 10 years behind as they say yeah i don't know, I, know? Don't know. I think i think we're a lot closer than that to be honest but it's well i mean look at um the sort of stereotypical uh, american trait of wanting to be a star wanting to wanting to be big in hollywood right mm. we now have that here with things like x factor where you get the sense of impression in this country <clears> that people just want to take the easy way out and they don't want to grow to get to where they are yeah right that's yeah. not the nose to the grindstone british attitude of like say the 40s this is something new we're not that way anymore yeah we're a different beast in this in this country <laughs> now this mm. is it the the english attitude has changed it's morphed into something mm. completely different yeah All right? i don't know what it is I'm not sure. I'm looking now. I'm, I can't quite identify it, but it's <laughs> it's not that stiff up a lipidness. It's not that you know. Just don't draw attention to yourself. Don't be special. Don't be talented, and everything will be fine. Yeah, stick to your lane. You know? It's all right. It's okay. Everything is going to be fabulous. Mm. You know, it. We haven't got that stick to your lane thing anymore now. No. I yeah, mean, we've lost that. That's gone. Like I say, our identity as as a society, as a British society, has changed. Right. And do you think? And you think that's that that Brazil kind of just focuses think, on that. Focuses I think it on focused us is on being the stiff upper lip. Well, I think it's a, it focuses on the, how we used to be because we're not like that anymore. We are. We're different. We're a different beast now. So, okay, For so Ill or whatever, but I think it this is a damning indictment on what that attitude, you know, the English attitude, the stereotypical mm. English attitude. I think that's that's what it is. I mean, look, we have football violence now, right? We don't anymore. have people going jolly good game anymore, right? We don't. We have people punching the shit out of one another because of um, I don't like your football team. <laughs> How fucking stupid does that sound? seriously mm. because you don't like somebody who wears a, 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 a different colored uniform it's this is it you're going to create violence again that's not that's not that attitude that's not from that era that's a you know we don't have that anymore so i think this mm. it's like oh how can i explain it um you know how um roger waters has got an obsession with world war Two. Right, oh, he's, and he, he's kind of gone off the fucking rails, but yeah, go on. But you know how when he was doing Floyd stuff, there was an awful lot of mm. post-war, yeah, the sort of trauma from right. that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of because I there's there's like um, there's 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 lines in lyrics. I mean, comfortably numb, like talking about ships yeah. burning off the shore and stuff like that. Yeah, that's know. that's yeah symbolism about drugs yeah go on carry on yeah you see that was a a thing of its time right and i think brazil is very much in that sort of vein i think it's very much how society how the english society used to be and how how it was at the time that film was made mm. uh, it was still a thing back then we were only just starting to change as a society and i think his film hmm is a damning indictment on that kind of attitude. Yeah. Like, don't just, you know, don't step out of your lane. Don't do this. Don't do that. I mean, like I said, we're not like that now, but mm. I think that's what it was having to pop out as well. One moment uh, encapsulates that. Mm. You know, when he's moved into that new room, when he's um, taking his promotion. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he knocks next door to use the computer. 
yeah opens the door and he sees that bloke struggling with something like that. and then he's like he's, oh, struggling, well, well. he's struggling with the table <laughs> that's yeah. right yeah isn't he trying to move it yeah because because that's because that's that's the thing it's one desk it's one desk going through yeah. the wall isn't it you can't take that's my what... chairs I only have one now, and I sit on that one. Um, but <laughs> it's that moment of struggling in your own little world until someone else sees you, and then once you're seen, it, it, it's like um, uh, nanoparticles. Once you see it, you, you forget what state it's in, and so it, you know, it comes down. Like, what, what, what do you want? How can I help you? <laughs> what you mentioned about the table, and I'm yeah. only laughing about this now. Yeah. Right, because I'm now thinking back to it, and it's when Lowry has had a fuck enough, and he just gets the table, and just yank, and you hear somebody next door go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's lots of stuff like that. I, I mean, see, I'm I'm now laughing. This is mm. this is a, a, the Austin Powers thing. Mm. It's Austin Powers three. Right, where we yeah. sat there, we watched it, didn't tatter at all for it, thought back, started quoting it, yeah. and it was like, oh, that was hilarious. It's like, well, it wasn't at the time, was it, you mm. fucker? You didn't laugh at all like that. It's no. just because you now, it's the jokes have now landed, yeah, as it were. Yeah, well, it's, it's the same as like, you can't wear that suit, you know, you have to wear that suit, go, go get changed. And he yeah. looks at the daughter and she goes, oh, don't be silly. I'm oh, not gonna... no, no, yeah. that that yeah. was the most disturbing. Put it on, big boy. I won't look at your willy. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> fucking hell, this is this shows how attitudes have changed and what, you know, things that you don't actually get small children to say on film. Mm. Yeah. That was, that was a, that was a mic disturbing <laughs> coming out of it. It's like, I sat there with my mouth open, like, fucking hell. Yeah. Oh yeah! Don't worry, big boy. I won't look at your willy. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. It was just that was very odd. But I mean, <laughs> yeah the the whole thing of the whole thing of is it you know is it British life being parodied? I think I do take a little bit of that sort of like the nineteen forties nineteen fifties kind of stiff upper lip, get on with things. The government knows best. Follow the follow the rules. You know. You know. Ship, you know, fix up and make you do kind of attitude. There's that xenophobic side of it yeah, as well. When yeah. they get out of the building and he drops all the papers, and she, that old woman, is like ranting away, mm. like, "You come over here and you destroy our oh, this, true, that, and yeah. the other." Yeah, it's like, yeah, they could have just called this Brexit, they, really, <laughs> not Brazil, Brexit. Yeah, but that, right? but, yeah, but I think I. <laughs> I think, well, I guess related to Brexit, I guess the thing that comes about is, is it all comes all comes about because there are uh, essentially it's a planet of middle managers. It's a planet of just rules for rules' sake, because the whole thing is about not taking responsibility. The whole thing is about not yep. taking responsibility. And why do we follow the rules? Because we've always followed the rules. Yes, but not only do we only follow the rules, but it because that then you don't have to worry about it. It's you. I mean, if you want to put it in modern context, it's a bit like um, a bit like eco issues. Yeah, you're all we're all sitting here feeling like we're doing our bit. We put our bit of plastic in a in a cupboard and put it in yep. a in a recycle bin, and we take our bit of paper and we put that in a recycle bin, and you know we're doing our mm. bit. Because that's yeah. all we need to do. If you suddenly had to think about the enormity of the shit that you actually, actually has to do to save this planet right now, people would freak or shut yeah. down. But they're given their nice little job in their nice little world that doesn't tr doesn't trouble them too much. They don't have to think, and they will just get on with it. And then if someone steps out of line and says, well, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to build a wind turbine in my back garden. It's like yeah. everyone's like, oh, no, you can't do that. There's rules. There's rules. Yep, there's rules. And, you know, and it's and it's that sort of attitude. Is That's Brazil all, all the way through. It's, mm. it's do what you're supposed to do. Stay in your lane. But also the reason you can't do anything that's actually worthwhile is because... If you do, you'll be out of the system, 
and the system has been created, but we don't know what for anymore. Bureaucracy has gone out of control. Capitalism has gone out of control. Because that's the other thing. It's like, you know, there's the, there's the kids, you know, you get all the sort of dystopian sort of kids with, you know, jerry cans of petrol to pour on cars all over the place. But then yeah. you've also got, you know, you've also got people who will s- sit there and go, oh, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have my facelift, my 75th facelift of the day yeah. and all that kind of shit. Because they've got the money and they don't know what to do with it. And they're Mother, everything... is that you? Yes, exactly. And so the world is a dystopia and it's a George Orwell thing insofar as nobody is truly free because everyone is worried about the rules, about being culpable for something. Even down to like um, Michael Palin's character when he's presented with the fact that he killed the wrong man in torture. He didn't kill the wrong man because there's, you know, there's rules about that. You know, I yeah. just didn't know I about it. Right man. Yeah, no, no. I didn't kill a man because there's rules about that. I just didn't know about the heart condition because we had the wrong file from central processing. Mm. So, I got the wrong I got I got it wrong, but it's not my fault I got it wrong because I thought I was torturing someone else and he wouldn't have died. Do you notice something? Yeah. All right. For a country that uses the pound, right, mm. there's an awful lot of buck passing going on. Oh, yeah. But that's the whole point. It's trickle down, isn't it? Mm. It's the trickle down buck passing. It's the. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, look at that. What was it? The bit where um, uh, Lowry says to Ian Holmes' character, mm. you know, um, you know, oh, it wasn't their mistake. Oh, oh, it wasn't? No, no, it was uh, information retrieval. Mm. Ah, oh, thank God. Well, you yeah. Gotta finish your cup of tea then. It's none yeah. of this, like, you know, some bloke has died because yeah. of this mistake. Yeah. It's that, oh, thank fuck it wasn't me that made a mistake. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's it. And that's that's the whole point all the way through. It's the bureaucracy and the culpability. And it's the fact that if you move up the chain, the further you move up the chain, the further you've still got people who won't take responsibility for shit. Because... Mm-hmm. You get the Ian Richardson bit with, um, you know, in in that sorry, that place where he's kind of walking around with that entourage of people asking him questions. Yeah, and he's going backwards and forwards, and he's and it sounds like he's doing a lot because he's going around and he's going yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But if you listen to what he's saying, what he's actually saying is that's a thing for security, that's a thing for so and so, that's a thing for that. And you realise that actually what he's actually saying, he's sounding like he's doing a lot, but what he's actually doing is basically saying, take that somewhere else. No, take that to somewhere else. Take that to somewhere else. Take yeah. that to somewhere else. Delegating it. That's not my yeah, job. That's, that's my job. job. He's literally a manager who manages nothing except telling people to take it somewhere else. And do you suddenly think, well, hold on. You go up the tree and up the tree and up the tree till you get to sort of like, what was it, Mr. Helpman? You know, Mr. Helpman. Yeah. And even he is saying, oh, you know, things have just got to happen this way. You know, probably the best thing to do is, you know, you know, just, you know, just confess, get over this and we'll see you soon. And it hopefully won't damage your, you know, damage your credit rating. Hmm. Not that there's some way of stopping it. It's just a process that we have to go through because that's the rules, because that's the form that we have to fill out. So so Sam is being tortured, not because he's done anything wrong or because of anything that he has done wrong is actually worthy of torture. It's because he's in the he's in the system now and he has to be processed. And it's yeah. that kind of thing that runs through runs through Brazil is that is that whole parody thing of you know just just paperwork and that's why when he loses his mind at the end and he thinks he's been rescued by Tuttle Tuttle is actually killed or dis- dispersed or destroyed not by people shooting at him but actually he's consumed by paperwork he is that's what I thought when I saw that mm. yeah ah uh, okay because that's what Tuttle was trying to escape He's trying to do all this central, you know, he's trying to do all this central heating duct repair 
without having to be, you know, without having to be uh, constrained by, you know, Form 21B slash 5 or whatever the fuck it was called that was that was worrying Bob Hoskins. Mm. He just wants to get in there and fix it. So he gets in there, fixes it, and fucks off. And that's his that's his rebellion. That's his act of freedom. That's, you know, not having to fill out a form. Not having to do something, you know, in a certain way. Just to do something unconstrained. Uh, there, there's something that um, that his character says that was kind of like made my ears go up a bit mm. because we heard it recently, mm. which is we're all in this together. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. We're all in this together. Hmm. Uh, some people were in it more than others, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all in this together. You know, it's well, it's the nineteen eighty four thing. You know, all animals are equal, but some are animals more equal than others. Indeed. Um, the Animal Farm thing. Sorry, Animal yeah. Farm. Yeah. Animal Farm, not nineteen eighty four. What am I fucking talking about? Anyway, um, we're all so, in the same boat. Yeah, we're all in this together. No, we're all in the same storm. Yes, we've got different boats. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're all on the same sea. Except you are on a cruise liner and I'm in a dinghy. Yeah. Um, you're on an atoll. That's what mm. you're on. I <laughs> I am on the same board that that woman from the bloody Titanic was on. Um, mm. They could have got the other person on it, but, you know, uh, we won't go there, will we? No, no. No, um, no. no. Let's not talk. Let's not talk Titanic. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Latest, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Freeze your bollocks off, Jack. I've got my diamond. Thanks. Peace out. Um, um, yeah, but it's so it's just it's things like that. That's really what runs through through Brazil, and I think if it's stuck to that, I think it would be fine. But the problem is that romance is just very random. So I mean, yeah. is that not in his head? Is that actually happening as we go through the story? Is he having visions or flashbacks or? Is it relating to something? <laughs> Sorry. He says, yeah, if, that's, if, that's, if, that's, if, that's, if that's your if that's your last little words on earth recorded on this podcast, that would be very sad. <laughs> Nearly is. <laughs> say something. Blimey. Say yeah, something. Yeah. Quick, say something profound before you die. <laughs> You're like that character I told you. of the far show. I told you I was sick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told you oh. I was sick. Yeah. Um No, I mean... <laughs> as... <laughs> you guys are going to kill me. Arse! <laughs> arse! <coughs> Bob Fleming, isn't it? Yeah, Bob Fleming. And who's the one that says arse? <laughs> Bob Fleming's the one that coughs. Oh, yeah. There, yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's the one with the Tourette's in it. All no. around my arse! Arse! <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember that one. Uh, I'm distracted. You've distracted me. Yeah. You, you've successfully distracted me off off of my off of my rant. <laughs> um, yeah. All I was going to say was um, the other thing I was going to say was the film's about perspective. That was going to be my other thing. Ah, oh, okay. That's why you have that shot of that guy looking over the model. Yep. Um, but. It, the first shot that you get is, oh, hang on, there's a giant. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Yes. And, and uh, you know, sort of like from, from your perspective, from our perspective as an audience member, you know, sort of Tuttle being, uh, sorry, Buttle being taken off to one side and basically arrested and killed, you know, by mistake. It's horrific. But for everyone else, the perspective is, oh, fuck, we've made a mistake. Who's going to get the blame for this? Mm. And symbolically, it gets shown a lot when you ever you see the the truck driving. You know, you see the truck driving down this you know sort of boarded up sort of like you know billboard strewn road, and then the camera kind of lifts up to show you that basically on either side of the billboards is essentially a dead wasteland. <laughs> yeah. You know, and whenever you see whenever you see the town, you know the town looks all nice and big and tall and everything, and then five minutes later you realise it's just a hellscape of shit in the ground floor you know everything kind of changes perspective oh we you know lowry's room is you know not exactly glamorous but then you think it's all neat and tidy and ordered but then five minutes later one 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 visit from central services and the whole thing is actually just nothing but tubes and 
a mess. I'm just yeah. going to tidy this up. Mm. <laughs> it's not my house, not your house, is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we're, se- we're we're information retrieval. We never make mistakes. Oh fuck! They've gone re- turned it into metric. <laughs> Look at this hole. <laughs> they've gone metric. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they put the thing in the plug in, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Go straight through. Yeah. But again, it's all that perspective stuff of like you know, you sort of see, you see from you see from the was it Jill's point of view when she's in her room and there's these two idiots trying to put a plug in the floor and it, and it's like you see her thing and it's quite funny because he puts the plug in and drops it through the floor, and you think oh that's quite funny and you forget about it but then when, then when Lowry comes back to that place the plug's still on the floor. Yeah. Firstly, the plug's still on the floor, yeah. but also the lady's completely gone to the fair, gone away with the fairy. So she's complete, you know, horrific, you know, horrific situation. She's completely broken down. And what started off as a ha ha ha, isn't it funny? She's getting a receipt for her husband who's stuck in a sack and they've dropped a plug through the roof. Suddenly you go back to it and the perspective has changed from ha 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 to oh fuck, <laughs> oh <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, um, I, I think mm. this film would be. I'm not going to watch it next week. I'm not going to no, watch no, it no, 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 no. N- next year. But if I ever do come across it again, mm. I would get a lot more out of it. I think. I think the thing with this film is it's a film that almost needs to be watched on Blu-ray with the with a director's commentary or with a making of documentary to follow. Because Some films need to be spoiled, mm. and this would help, so you know what you're going in with. Mm. Kind of, but then you also bring to it what you, you know, your own perspectives to it. I mean, like Darren's thing about you know, sort of, here we are, you know, post-war England. This is this is post-war England's, you know, you know, shut up and make do, taken to nightmarish levels, mm. which. I'll be honest, wasn't my first thought, but I, I have to say now you mentioned it, I'm kind of like, mm, actually, maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it is that whole thing of this is a film of your own perspectives as well. You know, like I say, I'm I'm now working in a place which wants more than anything for you to fill in 27 forms when actually my job is just making, making a 3D box, but I have to fill in this, that, and the other on my appraisal why because you um, know. do you know what mm. i think i think if mm. if brazil were made today mm. then i think the bureaucracy would be replaced with a more political angle as they call it uh political correctness i think i really? think that's what i think it would ha- have you seen don't look up yeah it's that kind of i'm not saying that don't look up is a brilliant movie or anything and it should be you know held up there alongside Mm. brazil but i think the attitude would not be or it would be less about bureaucracy and it would be more about this Mm. Um, you know we've seen a thousand and one films and tv shows that level of criticism that that or parody that kind of attitude i don't think it would be anything stand out i i to be quite honest i don't know i i to be quite honest i would say that the the parody of brazil as it stands is still as relevant as it is as it was back then i mean (laughs) the one thing i keep i came back to this time round was the one thing that never gets quite well it never gets resolved it never even gets really kind of referred to as anything other than something in the background hmm. is the thing about the terrorism. Yeah. Yeah. So things are exploding and they go terrorists. Yeah. Yep. Now you could look at that as a kind of one of those, you know, if you were seeing it from our perspective and it was made now, it'd be the war on terror. You know, yeah. oh, we've got to put rules on getting on the plane. We've got to put rules on getting off the plane. We've got to put rules on this, that, and the other. Why war on terror? Well, what are we, what terrorists? You know, uh, well, surely there was all these agencies that were supposed to find these terrorists. You know, but we don't question that. It's just like, nope, 
this is this is how it's going. There's a war on terror. The other is over there, and they're coming to kill us. I, I've right? got an idea about that. By the Go way. on. Go on. The war on terror. Um, I don't think it's terrorist at all. Mm. Right. I think it's how shonky their society is, their their infrastructure. Mm. And what they do is because they don't want to be shown up to be incompetent because the um, uh, Lowry's sort of like the woman that he's wants to get Jill. involved with makes that point. She says, mm. how many actual terrorists have you met? Mm. And he can't name a single one. And it's like, that's because. There, there's no terrorist at all. It's, mm. it's just a shitty infrastructure, and this is why things explode because nobody's maintaining them properly. Yeah, because it shows you right at the very beginning the, the yeah. TVs explode. Which it's uh, what's the thing called? Central Central Services. Central Services, right? Yeah. He phones them up, and oh, we're sorry, we can't come to you right now mm. because we have a shortage of staff. Mm. Mm. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's that. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with terrorism. Hmm. It's bad management. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 all about Yeah, it's it's all about basically apportioning blame elsewhere. And when it gets to the very top of the tree, i.e. why haven't you dealt with these explosion explosions randomly, you know, Mr. Hepgood or Helpgood or whatever his name is. <laughs> Hep hold on. I'm going to get his fucking name right. Always, I'll get it. I'll, Helpman. There you go. Mr. Helpman is literally on the telly going, no, it's terrorism. And the reason it's they've not stopped for the 11th year in a row is because, you know, they're just bad sports. It's bad sportsmanship, you know? Yeah. And it's and it's like, well, why is it no one cares? And, you know, and then when you look at the, the explosion in the restaurant, the guy who the the main the maitre d turns around and goes it doesn't normally happen to us and it's like doesn't normally happen to us it, which kind of implies a that it's happened before but also could imply that there's something else exploding other than the bomb and exactly what you're saying it's the infrastructure it's the the fact that you know like lowry's house you know it's just like one day it just stops and he starts cooking alive in that room. And well, yeah. look, look at the other th stuff that he has. He, like, all this rude Gold Goldberg stuff, mm. where it it makes toast and coffee, mm. but it screws up as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it pours the yeah. coffee all over the toast. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, Ooh, that's all right. So oh, okay, uh, while it, while he chokes to death. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say the thing is it, this is what I'm saying it's this this film is as relevant now because it's all about bureaucracy our over reliance on technology mm -hmm. you know and it's you know even down to that little bit when um, they're going through the shop and there's like Santa he's like what would you like for Christmas little girl and she goes my own credit card and it's like now back then that was shocking. But now, how many kids, you know, got their own PayPal account? Yep. Mm. You know, got how easy is it to get money? How many money lending, money loaning companies do you see nowadays? You know, yeah. And it's it's just all that kind of stuff, and it's all about appearances. You know, you know the uh, um, you know there's a mess, but you know an empty desk is an efficient desk. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you've got work to do. Fuck it off! You, you've got to have a clean desk. Suspicion breeds confidence. Mm, exactly, and that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, that's. I don't think if you remade Brazil now, apart from maybe reworking the the relationship, yeah, I don't think you'd change an awful lot at all. To be honest, because mm. you know, we've you know. As as much as you know, it's the horrible truth. You know, we've got things like Guantanamo. We've got these these holding pens for immigrants. You know, coming over overseas. Yep. You know, you know, and it's just like, oh, they've died. They've died in the. They've died in those those camps. And it's like, right? Isn't that a problem? And it's like, oh no, the problem is really that we we had to take them in. And it's like what? You know, it's it's bu bureaucracy. 
overtaking empathy. You know, it's mm. it's doing your job, but not giving a shit while you're doing it. Yes, yeah. three thousand miles away. Mm. <laughs> exactly. I'm, we're going to send we're going to send immig- immigrants to um, you know whatever it is Rwanda, you know a place notorious for various things that have been horrible. And frankly, no one should want to go to Rwanda if they fear that kind of stuff. I mean, I've not been to Rwanda myself, but I'm not hearing lots of good things. Let's put it that way. And yet, you'd think, who would rubber stamp doing something like that? You know, practically saying, we're sending you to the worst place on earth. Well, it's someone who doesn't have to worry about that problem. All they've got to do is stamp a form that says, go to Rwanda. They don't have to read it. They just have to make sure it says what it says. And then the person who's putting the person on the plane, he's going, oh, the form's okay. Yep, you're getting on the plane. And the person getting on the plane is going, I don't want to get on the plane. It's like, well, I'm sorry, the form says you're getting on the plane. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like everyone yeah. lacks the empathy because the bureaucracy and the responsibility is somewhere else. And that is Brazil. Right there. And the and the only real freedom is either to ignore it like Tuttle, or as you know, as what happens to Sam is to basically just disappear into your own head. Death isn't the escape; madness is the escape, because <laughs> it's freedom to do your own thing. Yeah. There you go. And that was my TED Talk. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> no, that was your Tuttle Talk. My, yeah, my Tuttle Talk. <laughs> please fill out the requisite forms and please remember that the copyright forms will be on the side. So once you hear this, you will have to destroy it. Um, but I was told but, to come up here with the forms. Well, no. No, no. Is it want, stamped? Is it stamped? Have you have want no, central no, processing. Stamped. Yeah, you have to take it back. Um, mm. Was it was it just me, or or did anybody else find it funny when um, Ian Holm suddenly loses it for two seconds? Yep. When Dan. he's talking to it, yeah. But you wanted it. <laughs> but you wanted it. You wanted me to. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's loads of little bits like that. I, I I thought I thought there was lots of bits like that made me laugh. I mean, you know, I, I just just little asides. Just little, like I say, the credit card one with Santa was funny. And yeah. you know that sort of thing. Yeah, the uh, the bit where he he keeps running into the main office and everybody's working, and mm. he goes back in. And he can see that they're all watching this cowboy movie. Yeah, he like, runs out again. Yeah, goes back in with the, with the piece of music that they always use on Monty Python for um for um was it Holy Grail? Oh. When you see when you see the um when you see Lancelot go through that that castle. And he kills yeah. everyone, and it's like he stabs and he kills the first bloke, and the bloke goes, Oi! <laughs> and he runs through, and it's like the music's going, Da 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 you know, he's looking at you. But, yeah, again, it's the same thing. Everyone, everyone, including Ian Holmes' character, all are watching telly rather than doing their job if they could. Mm. But because the boss is looking at them, they have to start working. And then when he's not looking at them, he puts the telly on. And then when Sam comes in, he turns, goes, oh, the telly. I don't know what's going on with the telly. Oh, it's, um, and it's just that whole thing of people just yearning for freedom from drudgery and boredom. Yeah. But they can't because they're, they're, they're prisoners policing themselves in a prison. They're in Andor's, in that Andor's prison thing. That's true, yeah. But, and why? Don't know. Because it's just got out of control. Everyone's just everyone's watching everyone else. Anyway, right, I will stop waffling. <laughs> I think I think I've convinced myself into liking this film a lot more than I did when I started. Um, yep, same here. Same. Here. I'm just seeing lots of 
Yeah, just upper management. Mm. Yeah. The w- uh, way I'm I'm looking at it, where upper management used to get away with lots and lots of stuff, and as soon as mm. they go into the office, mm. then they want to crack down on the stuff that they used to do. Mm. I've seen that many a time. Mm. And you're like, you son of a bitch. They want to crack down on it, but then when the shoe's on the other foot, they don't want to do anything. No, of course not, no. And that's what I'm saying, is that whole thing. You know, they, nobody wants nobody wants to take responsibility, but everyone wants to be seen to take responsibility. Yeah. You know? And that's right up to Mis- Mr. Helpman. You know? Just doesn't want to know. And, okay, before we go then, the finale. Did you see that even just with him just sitting in that chair, pulling away in that, you know, steam steam chimney, the reactor chimney? Did you see that as a hopeful ending or a downbeat ending? I'll be honest, I'm trying to remember the ending now. Basically, there's a massively surreal escape attempt. Michael Palin gets shot in the head. Yeah, when then, he's wearing that baby mask. Yeah, he Wait, gets... I, I've seen that shot before. Mm. It, it's one of them oh, 100 movies you have to see. Brazil mm. and this. Yeah. And as soon as I saw it, <coughs> <coughs> I was like, oh, oh, I recognise that. I'm actually yeah. watching that film, am I? Oh, yeah. good. So, so you see that bit. And then you see him be rescued by Tuttle and his men. And then he gets escapes and they shoot their way out of central processing or central services and or whatever it's called, Ministry of Information. They shoot their way out. Then they escape through some buildings. Then Tuttle is consumed by paperwork. And then and Sam goes to the to the funeral of the old lady, mm-hmm. falls into the coffin, into an yeah. endless void. But then you realise he's in this house with Jill and she's fine. She wasn't killed or resisting arrest despite what Mr. Helpman said. And then he's looking out over this wonderful landscape, all green and pleasant. And then all of a sudden, Michael Palin's face and Mr. Helpman's face comes into view. And, oh. they, and they, go, they go, he got away from us, Jack. And they go, I th- I'm afraid you're right, Mr. Helpman. He's gone. Yeah, and he's bubbling away in that chair, isn't he? Yeah, he's he? still in that chair. Nothing's changed. And he's just sitting there going... Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm. In that big sort of steam chimney, in that steam vent. Yep. Just on his own in that little dot. On the one hand, that's a really bleak ending. <laughs> yeah. On the other... It is as I said. There's no death. Isn't death? Isn't the escape? And they didn't want to kill. They didn't want to kill Tuttle Buttle. They did it by accident because they didn't know about the heart attack thing. They wanted to keep him alive and get information out of him because that's what the forms demand. But the fact that Sam actually escapes in his mind into insanity, he's escaped. He's free. He's actually managed it. He's got a freedom that nobody else has. Yeah. By being absolutely cackapoo-poo, mental bonkers, away with the fairies, cuckoo clock springing out of his forehead, bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Brock Brock thingy from Simpsons? Yeah, that's right. Coming to mind you. <laughs> yeah, out exactly. To, out to lunch. Or we out have, to lunch. We're experiencing technical, <laughs> technical difficulties. difficulties. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's it. That's the freedom. So, in fact, even though it's the most bleakest ending possible it's actually, but he escapes he escapes he does he escapes in a way that nobody can reach him nobody can send him forms he doesn't care and in fact that's the point if mm. he just didn't care it wouldn't matter silence was the stare of life <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say to that. That's the thing. No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Okay, I'll tell you what. It's getting late. I'll wrap it up here. <laughs> Unless <laughs> anyone's got anything else to say. Like you no. got a word in edgeways. <laughs> but um, 
Right. Okay. We'll leave it there. Does anybody else out there have anything to say about Brazil? Have we all been talking out of our ass for the last 93 minutes? Yeah. Who can say? If you've got a thought about it, send in feedback. Send it into feedback at blackdogpodcast.com or hit us up on uh, Mastodon. Send us a message um, at blackdogpodcast at podcasts.social or jump on the Facebook group and leave a message there, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. As for Twitter, well, you could send up smoke signals. We're not there. Have fun. Um, Right. Or you can fill in a form and maybe we'll come back. Um, But anyway, yes, so that's that. Does anybody else have anything to add? Like, guessing not before no, Elton I'm chokes done. himself to death no, no, on cough sweets. No, I can barely string a sentence together. At the moment. It's, it's fine, dude. It's fine. Okay, then, in which case, what we'll do is wrap it up. And Mr. Elton, while you've still got breath in your body, what mm. film will we be watching next week? Oh, next week. Okay. Oh, well, he perks up now. We'll go, go, go. What what hell are we about to face? <laughs> well, we only did a two two and a bit hour film. I I, I fancied thrice that up a little bit. Oh God. Uh, the the film that we are going to be doing today that is related to Christmas mm-hmm. uh, is on Amazon Prime. Right. And. It, don't worry, it's all good. Mm. Okay, it's Rocky Four. Rocky Four. <laughs> Rocky it's Rocky Four. Four. They they Is have that... a bo- boxing I match on Christmas him. Day. Yeah, that's right. I will break him if he I dies. He dies. Mm. Wow, Rocky <laughs> Four. <laughs> Yeah, you're the best around. <laughs> Nothing's gonna ever bring, bring, bring you down. down. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> wow. Oh man, I love that tune. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! Not the film, just the tune. No, just the tune, man. The tune. In the burning heart. <laughs> oh, there's about as well. to oh, burst. so many classics. <laughs> In the dress for answers <laughs> and the the past. <laughs> Darkest night, <laughs> rising <laughs> like a spider, <laughs> and a burning heart. I hate that film. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that song ever. Never, not once. It's a nice, easy film. It's an hour and a half. It's all related to Christmas. You are welcome. Wow. Well, there you go. So we'll be yeah. back on the third Tuesday, the thirteenth, recording Tuesday, the thirteenth. Rocky Four, Rocky Four. I mean, I mean, in terms of cultural whiplash, going from a dystopian bureaucratic nightmare to I want to punch things in the snow. Yep, it's it, catch a chicken in the snow. I mean, it's it's you know it's quite quite it's quite a whiplash. Good work. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's do let's do some let's do some round the table. Did Darren? Are you looking forward to watching this? Oh, I am. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. It, I, I actually remember going to see this film in a double bill with Airplane. Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask. I think it was Airplane. It was. It was. It was this. And it might have I been Airplane, airplane. too. Sure, it might not be an Airplane too. Yeah, it was one of those uh, Catford Cinema double bills. Yeah, it's just like the what? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. what double bill? Why have you put that with that? Yeah, that's like me going to see uh, 2001 and The Spy Who Loved Me at Bromley Odeon. Yeah, it's like, there what? There you go. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, cool. And uh, for me, I will be honest with you, the Rocky films, I saw Rocky 2 about a thousand times. My brother was totally into the Rocky films. Rocky 4 just seemed to be on Beta Max all the time because my brother was into it. And when it wasn't that, it was me trying to get Star Wars in the tape drive, but I never really got past. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's about my only real recollection of it, apart from the music. So I, I, I know it for meme value, but I've never, I don't think I've ever really seen it. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, music, music, yes, I know that. Bits of it, I know, and meme value, but I don't think there, I've ever sat down to watch the whole thing. in there to die for. Yeah, I bet there is. Is I, Rocky Four the one with the robot in it? I think it robot. may be, yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, we'll we'll be back then 
for for Rocky Four. <laughs> I I have no words. I have no words. What's Darren, it on? Is it on Netflix or uh, Amazon? Amazon. Amazon, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Darren, just 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 know that you're the last film of this season the oh, week after so yeah. we're playing out so we're playing out on the 20th with you so you got to beat rocky 4 mate i've got to beat rocky 4 i've got to beat it for sheer for sure um, what why is this connected to <laughs> how is this connected, is this connected to christmas, to christmas? Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Was so this a christmas film how's this a christmas film what the fuck anyway yes so there you go right rocky 4 right over to pimp's corner um on behalf of jim He's doing a ca- advent calendar, um, which you can go and do various readings and audio recordings um, over at hypnagoria.com. And obviously, he's got the Great Library of Dreams and the main the main store, the main podcast all over there. The same thing. I don't know what's on this week because he hasn't told me, but we'll all discover it together. Go over to hypnagoria.com and find Jim's stuff. Um, Elton. Rogue Two uh, Media, go for it. Yeah, on Shonky Lab, myself and Scott Copperman are having a little Star Wars chat about the mm. stuff that's happened um, over the last 10, 15, 10, 10 years, I think, yeah, the last 10 years. So, And f- and for anyone who, like me, listened, uh, looked at the title of that and went, oh, it's just going to be ragging on uh, Last Jedi. No, he didn't invite me on. He just <laughs> he did him and Scott talk about Star Wars and don't rag on it. They just talk about it. So I, I don't even highly think I, uh, Last did, Jedi was mentioned. Was no, it? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. You just mentioned about the the sequel trilogy, and that was about it. That's really. it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm just putting that out there because I know a lot of people will watch will see a podcast with Star Wars as a discussion point and just go either. Oh, they're going to be doing this, or they're going to be doing that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 and I, because I know, because I thought the same. But I, I recommend you listen to it because it's actually a nice little discussion about Star Wars. Cool. Thank so you. there you go. Uh, there you go. Darren, are you on anything apart from horse tranquilizers? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Thanks, Tim. Oh right. Okay. Fine. In which case, we'll leave it there. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I'm sure we've absolutely enraged some cult fans of Brazil by missing some enormous point, in which case, by all means, let us know. Um, And otherwise, I'd just say thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Alton. Welcome. Not a problem. And again, good luck to Jim if he's out there listening to this. If he's managed to listen to this 103 minutes worth, I've got to say... He doesn't need an anesthetic. <laughs> this is probably put him to bed. So um, good luck, Jim, if you're out there. And thank you all for listening. And we'll see you all next week for Rocky 4. It's the ad uh, the tag. Uh, oh, that's Rocky 3. Anyway, um, see you next week. Until then, take care. Tatty bye. Bye bye. Ta da. There's a voice that keeps on calling me down the road. It's where I'll always be. Every stop I make, I make a new friend. Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again. Maybe tomorrow I wanna settle down. Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. <laughs>